Okay, I think I'm in. Yes. So just okay. I'll, I'll take my leave from you. Okay. Thank you, Andy. So you go to, I don't see the little circle. So tell me when yeah, I, you're, you're good to go. Justine. Ah, now start. it came up. Thank you so much. The little circle. So, so. My name is Justine Kucha and welcome everyone to the um, main meeting of the battery city committee of uh, CB1. I'm the chair of the committee. My co chair is Kathleen Gupta, but she is not available today. So, um. We're just fly I'm flying solo today. Solutions helping me out and, and we're, we're, we've got a big agenda. Um, so, you all know the way this works is by Robert's rules. So we will hear our presentation questions will be able to be asked 1st by the board members. Then by the public. So if you're here and you um, are a member of the public, raise your hand. Board members, I will, if you put your cameras on and wave at me, I may see you, but I, I will be looking for your hand raised in the little Zoom chat or Teams or meetings, whatever this is, WebEx. So with that said, welcome everyone. And our first agenda item is the introduction to at Brookdale or from Brookdale by Maureen Murphy and Andrew Ike. 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 Very good. All right. It's all yours, guys. Thank you. Well, I'll get. Am I echoing to everybody or just me? No, you're echoing to everybody. So if you've got a phone and a computer, just pick one. Yeah, I don't know. So, just Andy, Mr. Ike, I would just turn your speakers down a little bit and then um, make sure to mute yourself when you're done talking and you should be fine. Maureen, why don't you get us started? <laughs> okay, can you hear me? I'm. Yes, you're fine. No echo. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, really, we just want to thank all of you who have been supportive to us since we have started at Brookdale. And uh, Andy and I have now been there over six months, which is hard to believe. And um, really, we're starting to reach out. We want to become a active partner in Battery Park City. And Andy's actually moved to Battery Park, so he is also a resident. Um, we wanted to introduce ourselves as I'm the director of sales and marketing at the community and Andy is our new executive director. Um, and our in initial efforts here are trying to just reach out and express our interest in becoming more involved. If there's any committees that we can join, um, we're looking to possibly sponsor any of the teams that might need it. So we really just wanna become a valuable partner in the community and um, that's really why we are on today. I mean, the community has been in Battery Park for 21 years, um, so it is established and I believe most people are aware. Um, but Andy, I don't know if you wanna kind of jump on at this point or share, I know we don't have a lot of time, but. Yeah, and unfortunately it looks like I'm literally echoing her sentiments. So, Took us six months to get here, but I still didn't get here. You are so funny, Andy. Now, well, welcome to both of you. Um, thank you, Andy. Welcome as a neighbor as well as a um, um, an employee, yeah. employee or whatever, a worker or whatever it is at Brookdale. Um, some suggestions, and then um, I would suggest that you get in touch with Lucian to put you in touch with um, Trisha Joyce from the Youth and Education Committee because she might be able to help out with some ideas of, of teams to sponsor. Because oh, that'd be great. Yeah, as we move forward, that would be you know, and get pre post COVID. Uh, the teams will be back. You guys will be seeing the kids all over the place. You know, you're right across the street from um, what is it? Uh, SIS 89 and um, there's all sorts of stuff that could be done. So um, we love it. Welcome. Welcome to both of you personally in the community. And yeah, Brookdale has always been here and. We're happy to have you. Um, please come to these meetings. Battery Park City committee is always talking about stuff in Battery Park City. Please feel free to sit, sit here and, and listen to what's going on because I think some of the Brookdale information and maybe the Pixar putt and the Ready BPC certainly, and then Nick Squardone's report at the very end, will certainly be giving some information to um, you to provide for your for the residents of Brookdale. Yeah, no, that's terrific, and we do appreciate it. If there's anyone on the the call that feels that you know we should become more involved in a certain area, please feel free to reach out because I guess our biggest question right now is not knowing what we don't know is available to us. So um, again, we're here to help in any way we can. So reach out uh, to us if needed. Thank you so much. That's great. Okay. And maybe we can, maybe we can um, at some point get a coffee yeah. or something. And, and that would be great. Just, yeah. So um, with Lucian, I think I, I now have both your information, although 
Andy, I still think I have you labeled as the wrong name, so I apologize for that. <laughs> I have that effect on women. So. Yeah, they got, they got, I just got all flustered and got your wrong name. But, um, all right, well, thank you so much. Anybody thank have any you. questions? Anybody have anything to say from the, because now I've got to look and see um, the participants. Anybody on the board have a question for these folks? I see no hands raised. Anybody in the attendee list have a question? That's okay. okay. That's it. Well, welcome. So. Oh, wait, I see Bob Schneck has a question. So, Bob, go ahead. You may speak. Yeah, firstly, I, I just like to also welcome you to the community. And I want to reach out and say if there's, if there's anything we can do for you or any particular questions you have about the community that we could just spend a couple of minutes on while we have the Battery Park City Committee uh, conjoined uh, for this purpose. Do you have any questions or? Uh, well, thank you. Go ahead, Mo. Uh, thanks, Bob. I mean, I guess our biggest is just you directing us as to how we can become helpful. Um, I know some of the things we had kicked around and Lucian has been great. And Nick has been great. and. Um, some of the things, as, like we said, we sponsoring a team, maybe, you know, doing some type of blood drive in conjunction, because it looks like battery park does that on a regular basis. Um, just letting us know, you know, how we can help and we're here because we're learning the community and we're getting acclimated. Um, so we're, we're still learning what's available to us. Yeah, and just for my part, I work in North End, I live in South End. So everything you guys talk about is to be interesting. Well, good. Well, well, so we'll do what we can to be in touch and we're all in the neighborhood. Thank you. Yes, exactly. We look forward to seeing you in the neighborhood. Next time, put your cameras on so we can see you okay. and, know, and, know, and know who. But okay, thank you and thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, everyone. And please stay on the line, you know, and listen. There's a lot going on today. Thank you. We will. Thank you. Okay, Justine? Bye. Yes, sir. I'm going to pop in and do a little PSA. Yeah. Um, have a nice uh, big meeting. We have a lot of guests here. I want to just uh, encourage everyone, if you haven't signed in, there was a sign-in sheet on our live.mcb1.nyc page. If you didn't get a chance to sign in, no problem. I'm going to drop a link in the chat. Um, if everyone just take a second and sign in, only if you haven't done so. You don't have to sign in twice. Um, mm. So with that, Justine, I give it back to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, and, and that's a way also for Lucian to know and have your contact information so that I can get in touch with you. So that's an important piece of information. But I think we can then move on to agenda item two. Brookfield updates on activating the upper plaza, seating in the win winter garden and a whole bunch of other stuff. Bob, take your hand down so I know, cause you're gonna have something to say about this at some point. So I know to call on you again. Um, and I'm not sure who's going first. Is it gonna be Alex or? Yeah, uh, yeah I'll start. Um, and first off, thank you. Thank, thank you everyone you. for taking the time and letting us come in and present. We're really excited to be here today. Um, so I think before we start, I just would in, introduce our team and the Skylight team. So it's myself with Brookfield, Alex Lucio, and my colleague, Lisa Martin, who looked after all of our arts and events programming. And then with Skylight, we have Stephanie Blake, who's their C CEO, uh, Chelsea Mullen, Grace Bunn, and Danielle Park. Um, so just to kick it off, and then I'll turn it over to Stephanie. I think as we as we all look to really responsibly move beyond this unprecedented period that we've all been in and really into the roaring 20s, um, our team at Brookfield has been giving a lot of thought to how we could really create an enhanced experience um, on the plaza this summer. And really what we're going to focus on today is the upper plaza, um, an experience that is really both safe and special. Um, so given all the positive momentum with vaccines and, uh, and the anticipated near-term return to work, which it seems with we keep getting closer and closer to, um, which will bring New Yorkers back to the city. For those who have left the city, um, we've decided to partner with Skylight Studios to launch a whole series of activations and programming at Brookfield Place over the next year. Um, so what we're here to present tonight is really the first of those activations. Um, so Brookfield and Skylight, we've worked together for a long time. Our most recent um, collaboration was at, um, in the West Village, which is, was our Love Bleaker activation. Uh, it was really well received. We really transformed Bleaker Street over um, 
over a period of time, and it was it was really just a great experience overall. So that's what we're looking to bring to Brookfield Place as well with Skylight. So today we're going to present uh, a conceptual overview of a concept that is called Bungalow, um, and we're going to look to introduce this on the upper plaza starting really right before July 4th. We presented this to Nick and the BPCA team last month. Um, and, you know, tonight we're going to present it to you and we're looking forward to hearing everyone's feedback, answering questions, um, and really and over the rest of the spring, we're working to finalize all the design elements. So what we're going to show you today is conceptual with, you know, programming schedule and then some initial design concepts, but this is still being worked through. So the last thing I'd say is before turning over to Stephanie is, you know, we're, we're investing a significant amount of money into this activation um, because we really strongly believe that this is going to be a great benefit to the entire Battery Park City community and really for all New Yorkers as we look to really help the city bounce back from the pandemic stronger than ever. So with that, I'm happy to turn it over to Stephanie and um, we'll get through this presentation quickly and then we'll leave time for questions as well. Excellent. Thank you so much, Alex. Welcome, Stephanie. Please, we've got the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Justine. Happy to to be here. I think, you know, really just introduce the concept. I think, you know, one of the things that we recognize and actually was prior to um, to moving, but I was a Battery Park City resident for, for four years. So I'm very familiar with the neighborhood and the waterfront. And I think one thing that interested us most coming to work with Brookfield on this was how do we celebrate the waterfront, particularly at a time coming out of COVID when people are starved, particularly in the city for that sort of beautiful environment that feels like a bit of a respite, but also happens to be, you know, at the point of so many different incredible, you know, restaurants and local businesses, et cetera. So a lot of the genesis of this is truly for the community in a way that whether you're a daily user or a visitor, monthly or weekly, that you have a place that feels like part of the larger New York City resilience campaign. Like everyone agrees and is very much aware of the city coming back in a safe way. And I think this is a really unique opportunity to honor what Battery Park City has to offer at the waterfront and, and do it in a way that's both safe and in conjunction with how everyone from, you know, government to a lot of the local organizations, including Battery Park City Authority, are trying to foster that sense of, you know, celebration of we can come back together. The target date for opening this is July 1st. So, in line with the city sort of really reopening. And I think a lot of what you'll see that Grace and, and Chelsea will talk you through is just a way of being able to celebrate this. I think it's a long time in coming, this being a worldwide pandemic, but obviously cities being hurt or hit the most. I think it's a wonderful way to provide sort of that extra additional energy and spirit to bring, bring to downtown. Um, and really it's based in, in the bungalow concept, referencing sort of the waterfront sort of beach theme. Um, and I think I'll, I'll tee it over to, to Chelsea and, and Grace to sort of take you through the specifics. Yeah, thank you, Stephanie. Um, we're very excited about this, as Stephanie mentioned, and Alex as well. We are really excited to take this waterfront and really emphasize its presence and, you know, the lives of the people who are in the community or just New Yorkers who are always seeking out new ways to explore the city and sort of take in the public spaces that are available. We're really focusing on reimagining the upper plaza at Brookfield Place as a seating and dining environment that will be layered in with weekly programs that really encourage people to come to sit and stay and gather in, you know, a safe way. As Stephanie mentioned, it really is a space that we hope can serve as a respite and just a great place that can be really welcoming New Yorkers back into their routines, knowing sort of where Battery Park um, City sits at the center of so many of these sort of, you know, daily and weekly routines for New Yorkers and just creating this beautiful environment. Uh, and so here are some of our inspirational reference images. Again, we really want to sort of evoke something that feels very seaside to emphasize that waterfront identity. Uh, we really have thought about ways that it can be this almost daycation feel for New Yorkers where they can, you know, happen upon something that's unexpected and welcoming and and very, you know, familiar to people who have spent their summers on the East Coast and in the New York area um, and provide that space again where they feel encouraged to safely gather to come together after we've all spent so much time apart. Um, we also do see this designed as a place that's ideal for both, you know, groups who want to be gathering as well as, you know, individuals. We really see it as a place that is a natural fit to take food away from the restaurant vendors who are 
on site at Brookfield Place or within this larger district uh, where they can bring that food back and really again be you know patronizing the local businesses and have a place to really enjoy those fairs. Um, and as we've mentioned, we really just want to emphasize, you know, the importance of the waterfront here. You know, there are very few spaces in New York that I think have this sort of sunset waterfront opportunity where people can dwell and be, you know, immersed in public space and take in this and overlooking the marina. It's just such a wonderful opportunity. Uh, and we want to lean into this and celebrate that as much as possible. And so I will turn it over to Grace on my team to walk you through the specific elements um, of how this comes to life. So Grace, as you're talking, oh, give, you, me, give me a clear idea. No, no, you're welcome. And, and welcome, Grace. Give me an idea of where you mean for all this stuff, because as you're talking, oh, oh, there you go. Absolutely. Perfect. That's Thank a great, <laughs> great question. Yep. That, so we actually pulled that, in, you know, the yeah. pre approved or um, sort of the pre-existing um, site plan that you guys, you know, I'm sure recognize from the upper plaza. Um, I think we wanted to showcase this first, and then I think we can head to the next slide to sort of showcase, you know, what we're looking to develop here. I think, as Chelsea mentioned, you know, we are bringing in, you know, a couple of different, you know, seating elements again to sort of encourage people to, um, you know, hang out, you know, have a drink, bring, you know, lunch and, and take meetings, you know, really, you know, providing sort of that community aspect. I think the other pieces that we're bringing in here that you'll see are sort of, you know, uh, you know, two bocce courts again, that'll be, you know, totally open to the public. We really want to encourage people to gather here. We have sort of two bungalow looking shacks, one of which, you know, we're going to have a concierge who's really, you know, monitoring, um, you know, who's coming and going sort of the um, reservation system, which we can get into next. And then also sort of um, a retail pop up shack as well um, for people to, to um, have sort of a taste of, you know, this New York. Idea. Um, and then, you know, exactly what these seating elements will look like again, are sort of, you know, somewhat in flux, but again, I think, you know, we have an idea of you know, some of these cafe tables. We want to bring in, you know, picnic tables again, sort of encouraging, you know, different numbers of groups. We also wanted to think about sort of fun ways to invoke, you know, that, you know, beach um, seaside identity. And so we have sort of sling back chairs and, and lounge chairs as well, again, to sort of create, you know, um, another identity. Um, and so right now what we're looking at, you know, based off of sort of the six foot distance seating, we have seating up to 108 um, people. You know, I think our goal here would be to increase that depending on how, you know, COVID um, safety protocols go. But I think we really want to be, you know, really thoughtful as we sort of approach this initially. And then hopefully as you know, New York starts to open up, then we can sort of scale that up. Um, so, in addition to the seating elements, I think we also wanted to provide, you know, some um, different images of, you know, what you could expect to be there. Again, these are all meant to be sort of, you know, installations or designs to help invoke, you know, the sort of beach feel. Um, so, in addition to sort of the two bocce courts that we are building, there's going to be, you know, some bistro lighting. You know, we're curating a couple of playlists, um, you know, all ambient to sort of help set the, you know, tone of, of what people are walking into. And then we have a couple of other, you know, really site specific, you know, um, beach installations. So, you know, whether that's beach flag, you know, surfboard installations, et cetera, I think really to help, you know, again, sort of drive home um, what this activation is and, and sort of transport people. Um, additional site elements too, I think really want to call out, you know, the bungalows themselves. Um, we have the dimensions here. In addition to that, you know, we are looking to sort of dress those up too. Again, I think to, you know, really, you know, make these seem really beautiful. I think really sort of, you know, I think the other thing is, you know, we really want to celebrate, you know, New York and, and sort of the local <laughs> um, fauna that you'll find, you know, on Long Island and, and sort of throughout the region. So there's going to be hydrangea garlands um, and, you know, some strong wicker lamps um, as well as, you know, just some other, um, you know, fun visual elements as well. But this is generally, you know, what these bungalows will look like that you'll see. Um, we're also being, you know, very thoughtful too in terms of, you know, the waiting as well and working directly, you know, with our um, architect and engineers to make sure that, you know, we are really satisfying the weight and wind ratings um, on the upper plaza. Um, and then driving into sort of, you know, the daily operations, um, you know, we have sort of our requested load in, load out dates. Um, as Stephanie and Alex mentioned, we're looking to launch you know, at the beginning of July, really in line with sort of, you know, New York opening back up. Um, so really the days that we're looking to be active would be, you know, July 2nd through September 26th. Um, and each day, you know, we are planning to be open, you know, seven days a week. I think, 
you know, based off of, you know, the daily, you know, operation schedules, you know, we're looking to sort of set up, um, you know, in the morning to be open by 11 and then, you know, by 9 p.m., um, you know, stay open. I think, you know, there's going to be the food um, service through Tartinery. Um, we also are going to encourage, you know, patrons to, you know, um, get their meals through, you know, Hudson Eats, the virtual food hall. Again, I think really celebrating everything that's existing within the complex. Um, and then we will be breaking down by 9 p.m. every night. Um, and again, this is all open to the public. Um, you know, I think we wanted to be super clear in terms of, you know, how we're, you know, envisioning this between daytime and nighttime. Um, so we have sort of these bullets here. I think, you know, again, the bocce courts are going to be available for public loose or sorry, use, not loose, um, on a first come, first serve basis. Um, you know, we're also going to, you know, be working directly with Tartinery here in addition to the other Hudson Eats restaurants. Um, you know, one thing I do want to call out is that we are, you know, developing a reservation um, platform, um, which would all be open to the public. Um, I see you shaking your head, Justine, but I'm sure we can get to your questions. <laughs> um, I think for us, we really wanted to be able to create a really safe experience and make sure that, you know, people are able to access the space um, and, you know, sort of encourage turnover as well. So I think that there's a couple of different pieces there that, you know, we want people to feel you know safe that they can plan into coming hang out with their friends um, and then also you know encourage turnover so more people can enjoy it throughout this time um so we have sort of in the daytime there being you know 25 percent and then increasing that in the evening just when you know more people will be coming through after work um so sort of starting 25 75 in the morning 50 50 in the evening Um, and then we have here, you know, our COVID safety plan, you know, we're following, I think, CDC recommendations in addition to, you know, sort of New York state as well. Um, so we have a sanitize or a sanitization and cleaning plan, um, you know, working directly with Brookfield staff to make sure you're wiping down, you know, all these different elements after every use bocce balls and, you know, the game boundary being wiped down as well um, hand sanitizer stations, you know, really making sure that also our cleaning products are registered with the EPA. Um, and making sure that we're maintaining that piece as well. In addition to sort of, you know, the guests um, and staffs, so there's gonna be, you know, a mask requirement, um, and then also, you know, maintain daily health assessments for, for the staff that's coming in as well. Um, and again, I think sort of, you know, as safety plans continue to evolve throughout this time, I think hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, it looks like, you know, New York is, you know, on the up and up, but I think again, you know, the, the capacity here that we're looking at will really be determined by the CDC recommendations and sort of what those, um, you know, distances will be come July, 2021. So we're keeping a very close eye on that. Um, and then we're also gonna have, you know, security guards at either entrance to make sure we're, you know, keeping an eye on, you know, the total capacity um, that's in at any time. Um, and then we'll also create, you know, a designated entrance on the plaza for anybody that's waiting to enter. Um, and again, as I mentioned on the floor plan, you know, all tables and loungers are, are currently at least six feet apart um, to maintain social distancing between groups. Um, and then the programming strategy, I think, you know, we also want to touch on beyond sort of the F and B concepts that we are, you know, designing a number of different programs to take place throughout this time. Um, they're all, you know, designed to be open to the public for, you know, people to enjoy on, you know, sort of a regular basis. And so I don't know, Chelsea, if you sort of want to go to the next slide, these are still in development, but, you know, we have sort of ideas about daily public programs and whether that's, you know, theme music, um, you know, bocce ball tournaments, you know, sort of like a theme date night for people that are starting to come back together, you know, family arts and crafts. So I think that those are sort of ideas that we have that'll be sort of on a, you know, a more regular cadence. And then we're also looking at, you know, what's some special events that could happen sort of in line with, you know, the New York calendar. You know, we're looking at something maybe for 4th of July for people that are, you know, staying in the city. You know, what are other moments sort of throughout, you know, the, the calendar that could be fun for us to, to activate within. So, you know, those are, again, sort of in flux, all designed, I think, to be, you know, really welcoming to the community, to families. Um, and, you know, really provide, I think, you know, an opportunity for, for people to gather. Um, so again, those are all sort of in development, but that's very much, you know, our, our goal there, um, again, to sort of encourage the community to, um, yeah, come back and celebrate the, the waterfront. Thanks so thank much, you. Bruce. Yeah, thank you so much. Go ahead, Alex, were you, was that you speaking? I couldn't tell. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, I guess, open it to any questions, and I'm, we can go back to any slide that anyone wants to spend any more time on as well. 
Thank you so much. Um, okay, so committee members, um, I see Bob Schnack and Sarah Cassell. I will let you go first. I have a ton of questions myself, but I'll let the committee go first. All right, so Bob Schnack first, then Sarah. Go ahead, just un unmute yourselves and go. Okay, I, I just wanted to say I'm I'm glad to see something developing there, but I, I've been living here for lots of years and I really like the space where it is. And I think this is a real big loss. So could you go to the, the seating as it is now? So you notice there's lots of lots of seating and lots of places to relax uh, for everybody. And then when we go to the planned uh, design, I was wondering what is the shack, for example? Can some so just shack gonna un unmute yourself and answer? Yeah, exactly. Sorry, go ahead. Sure. So the shack really is um, one of the two opportunities that we could really interact with the public, right? So that you know, it's, it's where the concierge will be. Um, you know, it, it it's kind of the opportunity that we could really connect with everyone. Um, they could come up, that they could, you know, get, for example, get the bocce balls, things like that. Um, it doesn't take, as you can see, it doesn't take up that much room. These aren't massive structures. It's just, um, you know, it's, it's, we just felt there was an important part to be able to, you know, oversee everything that's going on in the plaza, given that we're going to have more programming, et cetera. I just wanted to say, I, I really think that the, the two things, one is that there's a huge loss of, Lots of times I come around there looking for spaces and I can't find any, and that's the way it is now. And so once these things get installed, uh, shack number one, shack number two, and the two bocce course, courts plus the performance area, uh, there's really not too much space for the public to hang out. And when there's events in that activation area, there's nowhere even for people to stand. So I just as a suggestion well, there, would would possibly also, move those the, bocce court, courts into the winter garden and into the lower plaza just because I I think Justina probably agree with me that that once you have so few seats and once you have to have reservations to go to visit them it's a a huge loss at least for me and for all, lots of people who've been working there over the last few months and and I go to lots of events at, say, Wagner Park, and that little space around the performance area is way insufficient for if you actually have crowds of kids like we often do inside the Winter Garden. So those are some initial concerns. I think um, that uh, for a long time I wanted to have coffee available all day rather than alcoholic kinds of things. So if we move some chairs, if we kind of moved a little pastry something onto the lower, uh, onto the lower plaza, and people could sit out there and enjoy just being there, kind of like in Europe, I think that would, would be, uh, I think that would be a good and valuable thing. And my final, those are suggestions. My final question is, whose program is this? Is this Brookdale's or some is Hudson Eats? Brookfield, Brookfield. but yeah, go Brookfield. ahead. Brookfield. Uh, so, all Brookfield. Um, it's so all Brookfield. do we have as a community board much input into how this works? I don't know who you're asking that one to. I'm um, asking. I'm asking. But we're 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 we're, 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 we're we are here today to present this to the community, right? We want everyone to be aware. We want everyone to welcome it. Um, you know, we definitely take all of your points and you know, we'll take it back and under consideration. I think, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different priorities, right? Um, and we're thinking through how we could add more seats to parts of the lower plaza and other parts of the plaza as well um, to make up for some lots of seats here. We're also shortly in the next couple of weeks going to be reintroducing uh, more seats throughout the inside or interior of Brookfield Place. The guidelines have just been updated for shopping centers as well. Um, you'll notice that this week we're taking down the stanchions that uh, surround the seating in the winter garden as well. So this is just, you know, it seems like every week we're, we're new guidelines are released and we're, and we're changing this around. And truthfully, um, you know, this plan is, is our current plan. We have several other drafts of this plan that have 
a lot more seating as well should the guidelines further change. So we actually think we get, get to a plan that actually has the same number of seats or very close to the same number of seats we have out there today. So my question to you, and, and Sarah, I'm sorry, I'm going to jump in and ask some questions here, and then I'll go to you. But um, so my first question is, right now, this whole area is free and open to the public. Whether you buy yeah, something yeah. from Tartine, Tartine, is that that's called said, or not, you can come, you can sit, you walk in, you walk out. There is no concierge who is counting you, whatever else. You are limited that's, that's by charge. Charge. It's what? Free this of charge. Free charge. Yes, that's my point, is you come and go, and it's free, and you don't have to buy anything. What it sounds like you're offering, well, I guess my question is to you, is to come and enter it's, it's here, not, and it's not it's, going no, to be free. No, it, no, it, it's everything will be free of charge. No, nothing. You will not have to buy anything to sit down. Okay, this so, will all be free of charge. So, you so, can make so, you can make a reservation, right? And just to reserve a table because you want to watch a performance, or you know, you're bringing a picnic, right? Um, you know, we that that's how we want to do it. But everything will be free of charge. But it's so much work to make a reservation. Oh, I guess I'm just not funny anymore. Well, there, um, there, <laughs> you, you, uh, no, no, why not? I mean, at this point in time. It's, it's, we're we're trying to we're trying to figure out a way to allow people to plan ahead. That that's really how we're we're, we're trying to do it. Um, Go ahead, Jeff. And well, Sarah first, then Jeff. Um, amplified music. Um, what what's going on with your music? I live in Gateway. I face you. Um, I don't know if you actually know the area here, but um, inside Gateway and actually on several of the other large buildings just north of your site. Um, music is amplified and echoes, and there are lots of kids and lots of elderly people, and we have a lot of concerns about noise. Um, right. Do you want to go into that? Sure. Um, I would say that, you know, the, the music will be consistent um, with, you know, previous seasons, and, you know, our plans for programming and music will be submitted to BPCA for our permitting. So. You know, all the information will be there. Is this is this going to be a plaza where we're going to be having concerts into the wee hours in the morning? Absolutely not. Um, is this a place where you know there's going to be some music? You know, a little bit after work. Yes. Um, again, but if there's issues, um, you know, you have my cell phone number. You have our colleagues' cell phone numbers. If, th if there's ever any issues, don't hesitate to reach out. We we okay. we're here. And we don't want to cause issues. Just to be just to be. Absolutely clear. All of you are Brookfield employees. Correct? No, myself, Alex, and my colleague, Elisa, who's our head of arts events, work for Brookfield. We've partnered with, with a company called Skylight Studios um, to basically How carry Skylight out and produce Studios this event. How do they make money, Skylight Studios, as part of this plan? We, we, we pay them separately. They're not the concessioners that are within here, but they are the people no, 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 who are making no, no. This, putting this together. They're, they they they're, are the planners. They're, a, pro they're a production partner. Yeah. We're we're doing this not we're not doing this to make money. We're doing this because we're trying to bring people back to Brookfield Place and to make it a very special outdoor experience, given you know that indoors is, is a bit you know, has been a bit out of favor. So we're trying to rethink how we've um, you know planned for the outdoor plaza and rather than just having the metal tables and chairs, we we felt that this would be a great time to create a special experience that has fun, that has programming, that has the music during the day, especially as people come back to work. So that's what we're looking to um, really produce. For the for the local people who will just wander by and maybe, you know, maybe we get a drink at Tartinery and we sit down or we go down and sit at the other tables. Is that still gonna happen? Were they will Absolutely. they still let us in? to do that or there, do you I, I i want to clarify this will be just like it is today anyone can walk in anyone can sit down there's no there's no exclusivity whatsoever okay because it sounds like you're counting people yeah well that might be for covid for the moment but right for the moment we, we have to what i would like to ask or, or point out and um we'll get to that in a minute and then i'll let jeff speak is that Currently in the winter garden as as recently as last weekend, I think last Saturday, Saturday or Friday, I forget. We were, I was out on the winter garden area right in this space right here and went in mm -hmm. to try to, to go to use Lily's room 
inside and it was evening time. Two comments. One is the sound of the music. There was, there's like speakers there. I have no idea if it's bothering people in Gateway, but it was very loud at the table. We hear it. You, oh, well, you could hear it inside. Okay. I mean, outside, I thought it was it was it was loud enough that it was like you're at a bar. I would have preferred to be able to turn it down. The music was fine. I liked the songs. I liked the music. It just was annoying to be outside and it be blasted and have to be screaming to be heard at a table. But that's one piece of it. But the other side of it was inside the Winter Garden itself. The stairs were blocked off. The there was an area where block any kind of seating around the um, palm trees was blocked off. And I asked. I, a guard that was there if um, anybody can go sit down there. And they said, no, you need to show me a receipt. And I said, a receipt from where? And they said, you need to be buying something from Hudson Eats or you need to go inside. You cannot just so sit there. There's no open, it is not open to the public. And I said, why? And they said, because that's what we're told to say. We're not allowed in there. So my fear is your concierge is going to do the same thing to people who walk in and try to sit down. It, it, and, it won't and be. And there, and those tensions are, are being removed. There's going to be no, I mean, the guidelines have now been changed for shopping. But, but those so guidelines don't make do any it. sense. Um, is this Alex? I don't know who I'm speaking to. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Alex, okay, yeah. sorry. But those guidelines made sense to control the number of people who were going to sit inside, but not the, um, whether they were paying customers of Brookfield or, or you know, right. Brookfield Place, not Brookfield you personally. Um, Public just think, do want, I'm happy. Do we want to focus on the winter garden or do we want to focus on the. No, I'm just throwing that I'm out. Happy to focus because, on both. Yeah, yeah, both my, my answer is that they intersect because what happens inside it is the same guards. It's the same people. It's the same entity that's telling them what to do. And my concern is I hear right. you loud and clear that anybody could walk through and sit down. What I fear is that this is not public space. Are the bocce ball courts. For it, 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 anyone can play bocce. So you've got to go to the concierge and that makes sense. You've got to control people. Yep. And I certainly respect controlling um, the flow of people and the number of people in the time of COVID. That is a legitimate concern and that makes so much sense. I also um, like the idea of trying to get and encourage people to come down and get the businesses going. This has just been a really horrible time with COVID for businesses, for everything else. So, so this is a plus in that regard, but it seems like it's taking away a lot of public space because without so it's having all, it's all public space. Dial, so, so we're not we're, we're not taking any any public space away. It's all public space. Mm, okay, Jeff, go ahead. You may go. Sorry. Uh, I think if they went to the slide that shows uh, how you book a place, people would be relieved if you look at that carefully, as I did, and we we're giving the presentation. If you look right here, the third bullet under evening, Hudson Eats restaurants available to virtual food hall platform or BYO. That means you can bring your own food. 50% of the seats are available first come first serve and you walk up. It sounds like to me, you guys want to clarify that. 50% you reserve That's ahead correct. of time, which in the age of COVID is rather useful yeah, and helpful. Is, is that accurate? That's correct, 100%. And then if you go to the daytime, 25%, only 25% are reserved ahead of time with 90 minute seating limits. So it's guaranteed rotation so people can come and go. And 75%, you walk up first come first serve. So I think these concerns about it becoming closed off to the public to me, I mean, to me, in my opinion, that space is um, anything you can do to make that space better, I'm behind because there's something about that space that I just find very antiseptic 80s mall culture hmm. um, and kind of hot and visually unattractive. And so to, to do something to make it look nicer to me is great. I don't see it as a loss at all. I'm not with the other members of the committee on this one. There's plenty of other places to sit and benches and, and tables in the shade to the left and right of that uh, and other places all around our neighborhood. And that to me is a very hot kind of rough spot where it is. So if there's going to be umbrellas and, and other things like showing on the map and activities to do, to me, it's a net gain. And I, I understand the committee's concerns because there has been issues with Brookfield in the past, mm -hmm. but I feel like we need to look at the details and the details don't bear out the fears, in my opinion. Thank you, Jeff. We appreciate your support. Yeah, and Jeff, I would have to agree with what you're saying except that in practice it hasn't been what i've heard and what i've been told 
is totally inconsistent to what I experienced, what Bob Schneck experienced, and I could say it was as recent as when were we there? We were there. We were there the Saturday or Wednesday. I forget. Whatever the eighty-one degree day was, we were out there and outside and sitting outside, and it was lovely. It was at the tables, and then the it was two areas. It was and six. what? And then it was loud. Well, the loudness was a little bit annoying, but again, that just could be me being an old lady and being cranky. I give that. What's yeah, the complaint? I don't understand the complaint, complaint you're making. What happened? What happened was the winter garden on the inside. I had heard this from other people. That I've been getting emails and um, Bob Schneck, who I believe had said that he wanted to go sit down because he was tired from walking. They would not let him sit inside. That, that, the that, that, we, that has stopped. Like that, that would stop. But I guess what I'm going to tell you is it didn't because as early as last week, they stopped me from doing it. So that's what I'm going to tell you is that there's a disconnect between what you're saying and what is actually in practice, and that's my concern. I agree with this. This all may, I, I'm sorry, you can't see my my uh, cursor moving over your screen. I love what what Jeff pointed out. I love the fact that this is COVID safe. I do like the idea of having more stuff going on. I love the idea of bocce ball courts first come first served. That makes sense. All of these things are fun, exciting things to do. As long as it's open to wanna... the public as much as it's open to everybody else, yeah. I guess my cons biggest concern right. is so, I would like a guarantee and then have someone who I can call in the moment when I'm told they're being blocked from going in. That's all I'm saying. If they're not blocked, yeah. that's fine. No, no one will be blocked. They could, they could call me. Tammy, go ahead. Your hand is up. Hi, Alex, and thank you everybody for a delightful presentation. I think um, listening to what everybody's saying, I wondered whether or not there is, I know that Resi is a app, but not everybody has the app. So will there be a kiosk or concourse or something that's available right there for someone to be able to walk up because tourists won't know necessarily, um, and the local community who is used to that being fully free public seating um, won't know either. So will there be a kiosk or an opportunity for someone to sign up and take a look at the seating immediately upon walk-in? So, so, they could, so they could either walk up and sit at one of the open seats that's available on a first come first service basis. If no, I'm saying if those are, are full, if those are full, because right. it's a beautiful right. day and you have 75% um, or, you know, or 50% that's the first come first serve are full, but the other 50% uh -huh. is not. How can the public seat sit there if they don't have resi on their phones? What well, mechanism they, well, they are you could, going to provide? Well, they could, well, they'll check in with the concierge, right? The concierge will, will help them and the, the concierge will really help them download the resi app or the concierge will say, you know what? There's no reservations here for the next hour and a half. Please, we'd love for you to sit down. So they will be able to sit without having, I want to, I want to bridge the gap of those that don't, you know, may not have the Resi app. Those who do not want to download a Resi app, those who want to be able to just walk up and sit down that if there's a seat there and is there, for example, is there a cutoff? So if you have a 4 o'clock reservation, but it's 415 or 430 and you have not shown up. Do you lose your seat and it goes back to the public realm? You know, there's typically a 15 minute grace period on these sorts of things. I think anyone that's visited the restaurant is pretty aware. If you show up 40 minutes late, you know, there's obviously no guarantee that your table is going to be held. So I think we'll look to kind of, uh, you know, maintain that 15 minute grace period. And the seating last year that you had that was down on the lower level. That was over closest to the marina. Will that be reinstated as free public outdoor seating with the umbrellas again? Yes, all all of uh, we're we're looking to have as many seats outside as possible, given the six foot, um, you know, dif distances between the tables. Yeah, they were there last summer. I'm sure that that's a great add to come back. And then with um, your Skylight partners, what kind of Connections are they going to be doing with the large venue that's currently under their purview that's at the exchange at Bessie Street? 
will any of these um, spaces be sold in connection with that? No, they, they, that's separate. There, that that arrangement they have at, at 300 BC Street is with um, mm -hmm. is not with Brookfield. That's with a different company. But the outside space links all of it, which is why I'm asking. Is there a potential for them to again? I, we're, Brookfield use it is not them. involved with whatever they're doing at 300 BC Street. We're not involved with that. Okay. So I, can, I can't. I can't speak to that. I no, you can't. But the skylight people are on. That's why I'm asking. So I think you know for now, uh, you know <laughs> what I will say about the uh, the 300 BC space is that um that is you know in conjunction with the Van Gogh, I'm assuming you're speaking about the Van Gogh immersive exhibit, and I think that's something that's still sort of so many details are being worked out there, and and for now it is a separate event with a totally different company. Obviously, it does share space, and I think that's a benefit to the community as well, that there's some, you know, open to the public, um, interesting things happening down there to draw people and then as a service, but, um, yeah, for now, they are, they're separate. And for now, skylight studio skylight. I apologize. I don't know if your skylight studios or whatever the case may be is not looking to utilize this space as event space. Correct. No, we're planning to keep this open to the public. Exactly. Okay. The whole time. So no, there wouldn't be like a, a takeover of that for a private event, if that's what you're asking. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, it, they're just questions that I had to ask. Yeah, no, no, no. It's those better yeah, to ask those are good not. questions. And, and then the New York State has changed their rules in New York City in terms of outdoor mask wearing and that it, it is not necessarily a requirement. Well, you did mention that masks would be required on the outside area. Is that going to be different because you're on private property and requiring that, or will that not be in the rope? We, we're going to, we're going to, I think this is honestly changing on a daily basis. So, yeah. you know, this deck was prepared um, before that new CDC guideline came out. Um, so it's, it's yeah. really tough to say at this point, but I would say that whatever, whatever we do will be consistent with the guideline. July feels there, like a, what, a long time away. Yeah. Perfect. And then I just, I know it, it seems like it changes overnight. So I'm sure that this deck would look incredibly different by Friday yeah. um, these days. Um, then the last question I had is you're talking about pro programmatic music. How does the programmatic music for that space gel with the music that goes on at the district and the outdoor space that they have? Because in the past couple of weeks, they've had some live people out there, they've had pumped out music, and what is the connection or disconnect, I, I might think, for the clashing of the music sound systems between the two? Um, they're, they're not connected in the sense that Lee District is not involved with this um, activation, aside from the ability to, you know, if you're sitting down at one of these tables, be able to order food from the district. That's the only connection. Um, you know, I think it's really on us and our security and production team to kind of make sure that there's not a clashing of sound systems. So if there's music coming from the district, that's, you know, overpowering what we're trying to do here or vice versa. I think it's on us to make sure that that's not an issue. Awesome. Thank you very much. It's going to be an exciting summer over at Brookfield. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Thanks, Tammy. Thank you, Tammy. We appreciate it. And thanks you. Thanks to everybody for pre presenting this and for your forward thinking um, on bringing life back to Battery Park City and Brookfield Space Place and in, in the Marina area because it's been really sad. Fourteen months or fifteen months, whatever it's been. So thank you for that. Um, please don't um, interpret the questions and the comments as. Um, rejecting this plan. It's just that we want parameters on it. And and if there is an issue, um, we'd like to be able to have a way to address it in real time. So that's my biggest point. So thank okay. you Alex, for, for being willing yep, to get the phone number. And yeah, I, I, it's just this way there's a way for us to work together. And one more point and then we could um, move on to the next thing and that's got, that's on the agenda um, is I noticed pictures of the tennis courts and I remember seeing the tennis court that was set up on the um, 
I guess it was the lower plaza. I don't know where it was, whether it was up or lower, but yeah, I love the lower. tennis courts. One thing I will say, yeah, there you go, that last year, I think it was, or the year before, whenever it was there. I know what you're gonna say. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. What am I gonna say? Cause you know. You're, you're gonna say that the community didn't have the ability to sign up for- That is right. For, Cause for I like time. to play tennis and so, I tried. I tried so, so hard. So here, so here's what I would say, and, that, and this is what we did last year, and this is what we'll do this year. Mm -hmm. Our Elisa team, which is a great team, sent through to to BBCA a special login um, with you know we basically held some of, some of the times back for the community. It's it's impossible for us to basically go door to door to everyone's apartment of in Battery Park City. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll do the same thing again this year, and we'll maybe we'll go to you as well, Justine, and we'll you know say, hey, look, we have this many slots and you know we'll look to, to you both to kind of help help with that that would be so appreciated that would be so appreciated that's all you can ask for i mean there's a lot of people plus anybody in the city can come so it's it's, it's not realistic to suppose it's going to be open but um thank you i appreciate that and thank you all and welcome to battery park city all of you looking forward to the programming for the Great. summer thank you so much we appreciate it yeah thank you so much take care everyone Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Um, I think we're done, Lucian, and we can move on to BPCA finances. Is that a correct statement or am I missing something? Sure. I'm going to just give myself presenter privileges again. We'll love this. Just we have the. Uh... OK, so reviewing Battery Park City Authority finances, um, we appreciate BBCA coming in and uh, giving us a presentation. Um, I think that uh, uh, we could certainly do more. It's budget season for the city, um, so I think it's on all of our minds. We're going to be really gearing up to dig into lots of different city agencies uh, with our district budget consultation. So this is also my big plug uh, to all CB members that we really have to think about the budget. It's one of the the three pillars of community board responsibilities, um, but also, you know, given that there's a really unique relationship that CB1 has with the Battery Park City Authority, kind of trying to find an analog of how we can engage with them to the same degree that we we engage the city agencies is going to be a just like a constantly evolving um, uh, relationship and and and, and task. And uh, we'll just need to keep evolving along with the information that uh, we are able to consume because it, we need to also get better at knowing which questions to ask. So to that end, um, you know, Nick has been very good at providing um, all of the uh, uh, showing us where to find all the, the deeper financial information, the recordings of the financial information. And so I. Um, I spoke with Jeff Galloway and asked if he would um, uh, just review uh, the, some of the, the, the recordings of um, conversations uh, with the, the, the authorities um, board of directors uh, as they've received uh, information about the financials for BPCA um, and uh, future recordings. And so he agreed he would do that. Um, it's not going to be an intense process, um, but uh, if there are things that catch his attention, he may wish to bring that back and report back to the committee. Now, I also would like, you know, he represents renters. He can come from the perspective of a gateway uh, 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 resident. Um, I think we should also have a, a condo owner as well to be able to review things from that perspective as, as well. Um, so I would love to hear if there's any members of this committee who would uh, volunteer to also review some of these materials. It's we're not looking to make this an intense uh, thing. You don't have to write a report, but just to to see if you know, there's anything evocative um, within uh, the content that you see that you want to wish to, you wish to share back with the committee. Is there any anyone else? I, yeah, I I would ask that it be somebody other than me. Because I have my opinions, as everybody knows, I'm not afraid to share them. So I would love a fresh perspective. And I know we do have some condo owners on this board, you know, our little board here. Um, so I would love to have somebody if they would volunteer. That would be great. I see Betty's hand up. Raise your hand. Betty, speak. 
No, I'd be willing to do that because it represents the north side as well as condo owners. Excellent. I think that's a great idea. I appreciate sure. you volunteering, Betty. Yeah, no, I do appreciate it. Um, and yeah, that makes it that's wonderful. And maybe next month we can have a conversation that kind of goes into it deeply. And I'm also assuming that um, you are aware and everybody's aware of what's going on with the ground rent and, and people are informed. So at the end of the day, this is our lives now for both the renters and the um, condo owners in Battery Park City. And what happens down here in terms of affordability and sustainability all the way it matters to each and every one of us. So thank you for taking on the job because it's not fun. It's not fun. It's not easy. So both of you, thank you very much. Thank you, but I've, I've spoken with the chair of my board of directors in my building, and he's an attorney who's been one of the driving forces on this anyway. So I, he is willing to speak with me about what their concerns are and what he's heard from the group. That's excellent, and that is so I'll helpful. I hope that he would come to the, you know, to these meetings when we're talking about this stuff too, and and speak because I think it's important to hear from the different boards. Um, I see Bob has his hand up. Go ahead, Bob. I just wanted to volunteer on the basis that you said that Betty's on the north side. I'm on the south side and I'm in the same building you're at. And Jeff is uh, in the rental building and we're in a condo. So I'm interested take, if. Yeah, I'll take it. To represent <laughs> that. Plus, I've been involved with a lot of these issues for the better part of a decade. Anybody and everybody who wants to get involved in this, I love it. Um, the more people that are knowledgeable and inform themselves is so important and it brings a different perspective. All the way through. So, yeah, so Betty, yes, I, I think it's fair, Bob and Jeff, please. Thank you so much. And Jeff, you're here. So you're welcome, reiterate Jeff. that you're good and, and okay with this because it's taken on. <laughs> I'm fine with it and I look forward to uh, coordinating with uh, uh, Bob and Betty. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right, so now perhaps we can talk about. Um, oh, geez. All right, so a resolution, which I'm hoping it in in the mean in the between last meeting and this meeting we had lovely presentation put together by the Battery Park City Authority, lovely and informative, um, where they presented their 2020. Um, Financial picture, and uh, I know I also in listened to much of, but not all of the um, finance, the BPCA's presentation during the their actual BPCA board meeting, October, um, where they presented their um, finances. I didn't get the whole thing, but I did listen to, mu to much of it. So, um, in as a result of both of those things. I kind of put down a bunch of notes and put down a bunch of um, suggestions as to where we can go from here in hopes of being able to put together a, have a discussion and then put together a resolution addressing affordability and predictability for people that live in Battery Park City with the focus, certainly noting what's going on with affordable housing for renters, but the focus on this for this resolution being um, the uh, unique situation that owners, condo owners in Battery Park City find themselves because we've got ground rent and we've got pilot. Um, Jeff, is your hand raised to say something now? If so, please speak. Uh, yes. Um, wh what I was going to suggest is that, I mean, I think the resolution is a, is a great framework for exactly the exercise that Bob and Betty and I <laughs> should be doing. Um, and what I was going to suggest is that we can yes. we can discuss a lot of these issues here, but maybe the resolution should await us reporting back maybe at the next meeting, um, being informed by whatever the discussion is today. I mean, as I was looking at the resolution, um, it, um, it it looked to me, I mean, one of my sort of overarching suggestions would be that we need to um, Clearly express the problems that we are trying that we want to solve uh, in, in in this context. And as I translated what was written in the in the draft, um, it, my interpretation was that the problems kind of uh, boil down to 
a handful of issues. Uh, one is that the uh, condo ownership costs attributable to ground rent and pilot are becoming uh, unsustainable and they may threaten the ability of long-term residents to remain in Battery Park City. Um, a, a distinct but somewhat related problem is the uncertainty that the um, 2069 ground lease uh, termination, um, you know, causing negative impacts on marketability and value and, and maybe even uh, financing in relation to the to the condos. Um, and then um, a, a separate concern that the uh, <clears throat> surplus BPCA revenue is not being used for affordable housing purposes in Battery Park City. There may be other problems in there, but those were the three sort of main points that I took out of it. And um, uh, whatever we define the problems to be, I think the solutions need to be sort of carefully thought out and should take advantage of whatever work that Betty and Bob and I do in terms of looking into these uh, issues. And there are solutions that are being offered in the draft resolution um, that I, I think are certainly worth uh, uh, discussing. Um, but we may come up with something different based on the review uh, that we are uh, should be conducting. So those are sort of my overarching thoughts. I mean, I have specific things that I can say about specific points, but that's sort of my overarching. Well, that's perfect. No, thank you for that. Um, I guess my feeling is yes, but certainly we need to have the discussion and we need to be able to um, present an informed and thoughtful resolution going forward. But we're also faced with a time crunch, in my opinion. Um, every day that goes by is a problem for um, our condo owner residents in um, at River Terrace and Warren. What are they called? Matthew? River and Warren condominiums, because I believe their es reset escalation clauses have already come due. I believe they're in discussions now with the Battery Park City Authority, and I think that they're just sort of holding it off and waiting until a, a plan is derived that, that that's workable. But part of the issue with what's happening is it's a kind of a, as, as it says in the resolution, or one of the whereas is I make a note of it. Um, there's a divide and conquer kind of approach going on with the condo, with the 18 condos. And as each escalation clause comes, it comes due or the, or the reset clause comes due, um, the deal that is made may benefit that apartment building, but without having the, the whole all 18 addressed, it may not benefit everybody and it may not be the best deal. And so part of the part of the situation and frustration that I'm having is I don't want. Well, I, I don't know. I, I think I have heard from many condo owners and many people that. If they could possibly have it addressed as one, and if we can maybe get this done quickly, everybody would be better off because we would have yeah. certainty. And, and so, uh, that's, yeah, that's I'm, I'm, so yeah, at least I, at least let's spend time today talking about it. And if we can't that, come to a resolution, that's fine. Uh, and that was actually one of the points that uh, the, the 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 business of having all eighteen uh, being renegotiated at the same time. It's, I mean, prepared to be educated on that, but it's not at all obvious to me that that's to anybody's advantage. Um, uh, and oh, there's more power in numbers. Um, I, I do yeah, but the, but there's also dilution in, in numbers and, and the people with maybe the strongest arguments, their arguments may be diluted by the ones who have the weakest arguments. I, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm more than happy to be educated on yeah. what the specific issues are, but I'm just saying as a matter of general negotiating principles, Putting everybody together is not necessarily the best for all uh, for all concerned. I, I guess it can I be, or it could, or it, it could be, it could be, or it could not be, depending upon the circumstances. Makes sense. Let's hear what the board says, and then I also I saw that Dan Daniel Ackerman's hand was up. Yeah, he's back up again. I will go to him too because he is um, a one of the members of the homeless coalition has all, and then has also split off to form the Battery Alliance. So I know he's got a position. And I'd like to hear his opinion, but uh, let me go to Sarah and then Bob and then Jeff, you spoke already. So go ahead, Sarah. You have to unmute yourself, Sarah. Okay, let's jump Sarah and go to Bob. Okay, 
I just wanted to um, follow on with the problem. Like I've been interested in this a long time, but I'm really, I really don't know the facts. And I think one thing that a, a subcommittee could do is actually make a fact sheet of exactly where all this stuff is. So we know who's doing what, who's the head of them, make a contact list, find out what order and what dates things are happening and put everything together in a way that makes sense and circulate that to all the members of our committee. Also, I'm, I've always been concerned about the affordability of rental units in this area too. And we have had in community board one, some very serious loss losses of affordable rental housing. And we really, uh, since we really were talking about affordability, that should really be folded into this. And so one question just about the little subcommittee, and that is uh, from your point of view, Justine, are we just looking at the issues of Battery Park City or are we looking at CB1 issues? No, first, if I may, the first step would be focusing on the ground rent because I suppose I'm a little frustrated and I'm just gonna vent myself, a little bit. I don't understand how with all the talking that's been going on and all the research has been going into it that, that I'm not going to say there's a lot of information out there and I think that you're right and people need to understand what's happening and I need to take a breath and allow that to happen. I guess I feel I know a lot about what's going on and I, I've spent way too many hours and years delving into this, but um, it needs to come from a group perspective and that's the whole point of a community board is to get the community involved. So I'm taking a breath and um, listening to you all. I would like I to just wanted to make one yeah, additional yeah, no, no. observation. Go ahead. And, and that is, I think I've learned that on the Upper East Side, there's a, a, a comparable leasehold problem that's happening. And that um, people have been trying to sell their apartments for two or three years now and aren't even getting any nibbles. So that that uh, astoundingly important market in the city is completely frozen now. I th that's just my impression, but that's one of the things I would like to research and bring back to our committee. Yes. Is there, are there things that are like this that are having real problems with sales and rentals and settling uh, adjustment fees? And do they have a, a ground zero 2069 that they're facing? Perhaps maybe their ground zero is earlier than that, but I, I'm not even aware of that. I just want to present yeah. all that as a fact. Fair. Um, I would like this to focus on ground rent. Now, what you just said, Bob, was relevant because what it would be lending color and information to the effect of not extending the twenty nine the, the the ground lease or allowing things to fester. So it would it would give us information and um, allow us to move forward based on that. Um, so, but I would like this to focus on condos. I don't think we've had the much time as a community board focusing on condos. Um, I think we spend a lot of time focusing on affordability about rent, and that is a very important issue, and I want that to be discussed too, but I would like this, the, the three of you to focus specifically on ground rent. And then if you're, if you're up for it, we can move you on. Once we get that done, I want to move on to pilot, because that is also a very important issue, because what is facing us today in Battery Park City with ground rent and rent escalations isn't facing every building. It's facing some right now. And the deals that they make right now are um, to preserve and protect them today for, for some of these buildings, but it does not do a darn thing for what happens down the line. So, I mean, and, and Jeff, one thing to tell you is in the resolution, I've got to just pull it up and find it because I just have one. Oh, sorry. It disappeared. Um, there's a in link to it in the chat, Justine. Say again? The chat. There is a link yeah, to sorry. it in the chat. I appreciate that because I love my computer, but I don't. Here we go. Thank you. And then that yeah, perfect. It just popped up again. Thank you, Tammy, for helping me out. Um, one of the points in the resolution makes a note. Um, one of the whereas is, is that, um, let me find it. So we talk about affordability, 99 years, blah, blah, blah. Give me a second. Elections. Um, 
if in fact, can yes. we can you share screen or have Lucian share screen this? And then yeah, see agreement. you've got lots of hands up. I see Deb and Judy and oh, Bob thanks. and Sarah. You have tons of hands up. It'd be let really me let, yeah, let's let to go to them. Let and, the committee and, speak. Perfect. I think that's a great idea. Thank you. And I have this up now. So Lucian, thank you. And then I believe that uh Judith, go ahead, Judy, you speak. And then I'm pulling it up to see who is next. But if you saw a, a, a range, Tammy, I will go with your brain. You said Judy, Dada, Dada, Sarah, and then I see Daniel Ackerman, who I'd like to let speak after that. So, but in that order, please. Um, so this, this is Judy, Justine, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I am definitely in favor of passing this resolution. Um, there's no time like the present. We've been talking about these affordability issues for a long time. I strongly agree um, with Justine, your point about divide and conquer. Um, this is a Battery Park City issue, and it should be dealt with as a Battery Park City issue and not on a one-off basis where, you know, there may be less power from, from the condo owners um, individually, but more as a group. And, you know, I think the resolution's well written. Um, we don't have to go into this in the resolution, but I think there are things that could have been added in terms of where we are in our taxes. Um, you know, we don't have the same um, deductions that we had a couple of years ago. Um, and, you know, that's that's a problem. And I know we're, you know, we're talking about in some cases, sort of a higher segment of wealth, but, you know, who are these condos marketed for? What is the price of them and who are they for? And if these people can't afford them anymore, I mean, it wasn't like they were so affordable before. So, um, you know, and when the pandemic hit, someone told me that in my building, a third of the apartments went on the market. I mean, there's a lot of people asking, what am I getting? You know, what am I getting here? I'm paying a lot of money. Um, what am I getting? You know, and they're moving out of the city for that reason. And so I think, unfortunately, you know, in, just these constant increases are just driving more people out of the city when really what we need is to attract people back in. So, I mean, I think there's no time like the present. Um, you know, our tax bill is higher. It's, you know, for, for some, it's likely to go higher with this administration. And, and our costs just keep going up. Um, so I think for condo owners, it's, it's just simply not affordable. The resale values are going down. There's a glut of apartments on the market. Um, and and I, I think there's no time like the present then to, to address these issues, which are really coming to a head at this point. Thank you, Judy. I appreciate that. And, and, and Jeff, that kind of echoes my sentiments on it because right now, if we do nothing, even for the buildings that have um, no resets imminently, they're still increasing the ground rent piece piece of it. Forget the pilot, which we'll it's mentioned in this reso too, at least as a whereas and some comments about it. But just the ground rent is increasing and compounding three percent per year. And um, Lucian, I think you maybe took it out. That's why I couldn't find it. But um, I can tell you that I did the math of it, and at three percent. Mm, it's 86% of an increase in 10 years. I'm not sure if it's in here or not. In 20, and by 20, I'm oh, sorry, I take it back, not 10 years. No, it's, 20, it's 20. 68, you had 68% in 21 years, uh, which which is correct. I did the math, that's, that's Okay, correct. perfect, 68% in 21, that's it. And and that is, of thank you. Um, that is, that, here you go, there it is. You didn't take it out, I just couldn't find it. If if there's well, no change, well, maybe it is 86. It 86. Yeah, that's okay. I checked the math. Check, it was yeah, right. I didn't do right. the math myself, so that's how I, I why I'm confident in it. Because yeah. if I did it myself, God knows what it would have been. But um, yeah. So if nothing is done, this is what we're facing. So to every single day that goes by, it is costing. It is the, the each condo owner and each condo unit is losing value, and that is the urgency that that's being faced here. And it is something that the Battery Park City Authority is doesn't feel our urgency, and it's not they alone. It is. Um, well, well, just to be clear, I'm, I'm I'm not saying that it doesn't need immediate action, but, mm -hmm. but to me, immediate 
it's also if we do the resolution next month. I, I'm, okay. I'm just Actually, in terms I'm, of, yeah. Uh, my my only thought was there. Uh, you know, I started to outline the various solutions. There's there's lots of specific solutions, or at least actions that are being advocated in this resolution. I, I just mentioned one of them that all 18 be negotiated at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, as as well as a re related solution in there that not only should they all be negotiated at the same time, but they should be negotiated in a single set of negotiations that the mayor, the controller, and BPCA also participate in at the same time. That yeah. is not at all obvious to me that that's the best negotiating strategy. Like I say, it it, it perhaps it is, and I can be convinced. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, but you need to is. research it to know. I well, well I mean, that, what we're looking in, in terms of budgetary things and looking at the finances and looking at the settlement agreement and looking at the interest that various parties have in it. Um, I mean, it seems to me. No, I, I don't know anything about these negotiations and I, and I don't know. I mean, I, I gather from the resolution and the discussion that I've heard that people seem to dis, be dissatisfied with their own buildings negotiating progress. Uh, which implies dissatisfaction with their because there's been no progress. To be fair, I don't want to. I don't want to go by beyond that. There has been no progress, and that's the dissatisfaction. No. I don't want to take from anything from the people who have been Justine, doing it. Yes. Can I interrupt you and Jeff? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let more people talk. Thank you. That's exactly <laughs> where I'm going. This should not be a two-person dialogue. This needs to be far more inclusive. We've heard from Judith, but I see. You know, there are many other people that have their hands up and I'd like to make sure that we're as representative and inclusive as we can be. Perfect and good point. And um, I, I I need to keep this up. Detta, can you may you speak now? And then we're going to go to Dan, please. Thank you, Tammy. And thank you for keeping me on track because I do get sidetracked. Detta, I'm not, unmute yourself. There you go. OK, so I just heard a mention earlier, I think by Bob of the Upper East Side. So I just want to offer just one bit of clarity that there are only three condo developments in the city that are on land lease, and that would be Brooklyn Bridge Park, Roosevelt Island, and Battery Park City. Um, there are uh, anything, because those are land lease from a public, some sort of public authority. Um, the other land lease buildings have to be co-ops because they're on um, private property. So, just to offer that clarity, so it's, you know, if you're looking at comparisons, it would just be Roosevelt Island or Brooklyn Bridge Park. Thank you. That's, that's what I Thank understood. You. So, I was surprised to hear about what Bob was saying, but that's, I always learn something new every day. Thank you for sharing, Detta. Um, okay, can we unmute Dan Ackerman? Please. Sure thing. Thank Hold you. on one second. Dan Ackerman, you are unmuted. Oh, perfect. No, you're up. <laughs> perfect. Thank you all. And thank you, Justine and the rest of the members of uh, the Battery Park City uh, Committee for, for shedding light on this important topic. I will say, you know, first, let me actually start off with an introduction. So, you know, as Justine said, my name is Dan Ackerman. Um, I am, you know, have, have lived in the community for a little over eight years now. Uh, I guess it's nine years almost. Um, and in that time have become president of my condo board, um, have been a member of the board for the homeowners coalition, which all 18 battery park city condominiums are a member of, um, and have empowered to negotiate on behalf of the 18 condominiums and have since with John Delaportis, who's on the line as well, um, established the battery Alliance, which is a grassroots non for profit that um, is focused on the issues that are um, important to citizens and particularly um, homeowners in Battery Park City. Um, and the way we kind of further the concerns is anyone in the community can go to our website, which is savebpc.org, see what our, our five point plan is, but also um, directly contact their elected official to voice their concerns. And, you know, in the few months we've been doing this, hundreds of homeowners have done that. Um, so, so that's my background, but what I really want to talk about right now is, is what this resolution and what Justine really started off um, saying. And, and frankly, um, you know, some of the members on this committee, I, I appreciate hearing that you recognize the concern that homeowners have. 
But, you know, it was quite frustrating to hear that after multiple presentations that both us and the homeowners coalition and others have made to this body, there still seems to, um, you know, be not full kind of clarity on what the issue is. So I'll walk you all through it at a very high level. I, I recognize we have to move this forward. Um, and really it is when Battery Park City was developed, the developers entered into um, a ground lease with the Battery Park City Authority. That ground lease was not negotiated by the homeowners. Frankly, most homeowners who purchased homes were not fu fully aware of these provisions because they were structured as commercial um, land leases. And what really happened um, is initially they were quite reasonably um, priced and it was to promote affordable housing. That's the Battery Park City, one of their missions. And that has completely went out the window. Um, and why that has went out the window is the ground leases themselves have continuously went up in cost. And the way the leases are structured was initially, you know, there were lockstep increases until you hit a certain point of time where either what happens is um, in the reset that the ground lease amount increases to 6% of fair market value of unencumbered land, which in downtown New York City, where you have wide streets, is a huge amount of money. Or the and it's the greater of the two, or three percent more than it's being paid right now. And what that means is, you know, as one of the other board presidents had done the math, Bob Zach in his condominium, that would equate to one unit um, having to pay approximately it was $113,000 per month um, if that reset were to occur. So clearly, that's unsustainable. And the other issue is the leases themselves expire in 2069. Um, and what that means is people right now who are trying to buy homes are unable to get mortgages. Seniors, and it, it's that's starting to occur, banks are starting to take note of this. Seniors who live in the community and want reverse mortgages, whether we agree with them or not, are unable to. Um, and some of them need that money for, you know, to support their golden years. So this is a huge issue. And on top of that, um, the affordability crisis has occurred where today, just for example, in my condominium, a one bedroom apartment, um, the cost that is paid for HOAs, which have not went up in the seven years I've been on the board, so the common charge cost, the pilot and the ground lease nearly equals what rent is. So, and this is an issue across the community. So in essence, the value and the benefit of owner home ownership has been wiped out. So it's, it, we're at a point where something needs to occur or people are just gonna start walking away from their apartment today New people who are willing to come in are not going to be able to mortgage. So you're really just leaving it for people who can pay cash, um, which is investors. So further degrading the community. And then the last piece is you have an expiration coming and we're, we're all kind of aware that it's unlikely that the state who's our landlord is going to evict 4,000, the residents of 4,000 different condominiums, which is probably somewhere around 12 to 15,000 people, depending how many people are in each household. So how do we address this? There's a lot of issues and I, you know, this is a really long um, resolution and it's three points in my mind. One, we have to extend the ground leases for 99 years. Two, we need to stop um, the kind of uncontrollable increases in ground leases. And I think the easiest, it'd be great to say, let's freeze it and reduce it. But the reality is that's probably not going to occur. So let's align it with the rent, the New York City Rent Control Guidelines Board. We're supposed to promote affordable housing. They dictate, you know, what is an appropriate increase for private landlords. The state um, should follow that. And then lastly, once we get those issues addressed, let's look to the pilot issue with the city. And why all of this is such an issue and why it's kind of imploding is the homeowners coalition has been trying to negotiate with the authority for five years. And we've been getting the same runaround because the authority is not incentivized to, to deal with this. I don't think it, this issue is so complex then in five years, there could be, there was no movement. On top of that, they hired a consultant and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to try to address us, and they're still unable to. Um, that just shows, you know, no lack of will. So we need to pressure and, you know, our elected officials to move this forward. The community board, which represents the community, needs to pressure the you know, those elected officials and make clear their position, because this is one of the top issues that are relevant to the community. And this isn't the first time this has occurred. Back in the day when Sheldon Silver represented the community, the resets were supposed to um, take place then. He stepped in as our elected representative 
and frankly kick the can down the road, which was great at that time, but we're at the point where it needs to be addressed. So in summary, you know, as members of this committee, frankly, I don't know how you're not all well aware of these issues because this should be, you know, top three issues that you, the community is facing. Um, we presented multiple times, but taking it a step further is, you know, I, I kind of implore you to actually pass a resolution and make this clear. And it, this should be on every month's agenda in your meetings, what is being done. Um, and I know it has been recently, but it needs to do be even more so. And if it's not, I would just ask myself as a member of the community board and, and this committee, uh, the Battery Park City Committee, am I truly representing and, and addressing the issues of the community? Um, so I'll pause there. I'm happy to answer any of your questions on the specifics. I recognize we're, you know, I don't want to take a half hour from you, but um, this really is an important issue and it shouldn't be kicked down the can anymore. That kick, that, the can shouldn't be kicked down the road anymore. Dan, thank you so much. And I appreciate your passion and, and the efforts you've put forth. And um, I, I cannot agree with you more. Um, I feel as if, and I guess I'll just say this once, everything that's in the whereas is, that's fact. That stuff, I don't think anybody can disagree with the whereas is because that is, um, unless you're going to challenge my math, I, I, there's nothing to challenge. That that has been years of putting together information. Um, I also added um, some things in terms of the um, consolidation of all the homeowners together. That was actually a Part of a comment that was written read into the minutes of the last the, the bat, last um, battery park city authority meeting um, the, the link Nick that you sent me to to attach to that was something that you had read in and that was from one of the Warren and Riverhouse I believe that this is me believing which is always a sh relying on my memory but whether it was Bob Zach or um, one of the two. Um, Condo owner, condo representatives, board representatives from River and Warren, who said we should all be together. That's not my, you know, brainchild. I heard that, added that at the last minute because I thought, oh, okay, that's what they're saying. Um, and they put that on the record, and I am well, um, I, I'm confident that that was there. I mean, the the therefore be it resolves is certainly up for grabs to me, because there are some contradictory asks, one of which is saying, you know, freeze ground rent. The other one is saying, oh, only increase it 1%. And it references the, the rent guidelines board for rent stabilized apartments, whatever is lower. Um, I think to be fair to the Battery Park City Authority, who I will say again, I value them being our um, landlord. I think that they have provided an amazing service. I, I have nothing that I am ever going to say is going to be looking to get rid of them or do anything that jeopardizes, that jeopardizes their position. I believe that the negotiations have not gone as far as they need to go or not gone anywhere, if that's a fair statement, because not enough people have been at the table. And the authority, what we're asking for is, is a, um, we're not asking for revenue neutral changes. We're asking for a total revamping of the, of the ground rent with each one of these condo buildings. It's a whole, it's like ripping up the contract and starting from scratch. And that is a huge thing, and I don't believe the Battery Park City Authority can do that alone. I think they need to have the controller in the room. I think they have to have the mayor in the room because it's money that is being taken, if you want to say, from the city of New York. And I'm not saying taken and no money comes from us. No, no, we are generating Christine, a lot of money. More people from the community go over the resolution. If you want it passed, people need to understand and know what's in it. Okay, I will. Judith, do you have your hand? Judy, you have your hand up again or no? I'll take it down. Oh, okay, so you're good. Okay, let's go through the resolution. I do want to pass. So what that means me reading it, I am happy to read it. I, I would like it to be passed as much as possible. And um, I am willing to take out some Betty still has her hand up. I didn't see Betty's hand. I'm sorry, Betty, please go. I apologize. I did not see you. I'm with Jeff. I think we are completely unprepared. And at this point, I would vote down the resolution because it needs more tuning. And as far as one month making that much difference, I strongly disagree. And I think that the ill-advised wording in there would do more damage than the tension would be of value. Which ill-advised wording? Because you do know that- I'm well, with I'm Jeff. Let yeah. the group look at it 
get back next month and I think it'll look different. Um, the proposals. Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, the, the, the therefore be it resolves part of it is what you're, con you're concerned with. Is that a correct statement? Uh, both. Both. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, I'd like to hear from everybody. Maybe we, could we take a vote on postponing it versus trying to talk through it now? Lucian, can we do that? And then I'm fine with going with the, what, what majority says. Okay. Um, somebody can make oh, a motion to the table. Raised. And maybe Jeff's hand is raised too, but if you'd like to speak now, Jeff, that's fine. Yeah, I just wanted to, you know, I agree with Betty's agreement with me. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I just want to be clear. It's, it's not that we're not aware of the problem. The problems, we're well aware of all the problems. We agree they're very serious problems. What, what, um, what I was concerned with is based on the relative lack, the, the, the relative lack on at least my part of the details of the negotiating uh, positions and so forth. It's hard for me to feel comfortable recommending a particular solution uh, to the problems. Um, and, uh, and, you know, for, if, if all 18, I mean, if you're, you're telling me that you've surveyed the, the boards of all 18 buildings and all 18 buildings want to be part of a massive negotiation, I would certainly go with that. I think they're entitled to, to, to group together, but, but if, but if one building wants it and the other 17 don't, I, I feel perhaps differently about that point. Uh, I suspect it's somewhere in between. Um, go ahead. Sorry. And. And as I say, I can be persuaded that num numbers make a, a better negotiating, but from from my memory of how this issue has been discussed over the years, e each building has different issues. Yes. They, they, they were leases that were entered into Correct. in different time periods and trying to mix them all together in one size fits all may not work and uh, and it may disadvantage some buildings that may advantage other buildings. I just don't know. I don't know enough to know. No, you you are actually question. really spot on. Um, in fact, Jeff, because what happened in 29 in 2009, 2010, whenever the last agreement was was was. Um, uh, put together and, and agreed upon by with Sheldon Silver's input. Um, that was a coalition of 11 and then became 12 buildings at which. Case at which point. Um, the 12 buildings did negotiate and you are correct. It was a negotiation. Some of the buildings lost ground, mine being one of them. Um, other buildings gained ground because it was a, everybody made a deal. In that deal, the 3% um, increases of annual, annual increases came through as well as a, 40, a 2042 um, rent escalation date went forward. But I do wanna tell you everything that's in here was are requests from the homeowners coalition to the Battery Park City Authority. But that's different than the buildings. I think. I mean, the, the homeowners the, coalition the, is made up of the eighteen buildings. They are made every, up of their board. Just, just and and Jeff. That is what they are. Justine and Jeff. So sorry, yeah. to, I I can't raise my hand because I'm the host. No, no, go ahead, please. Um, I just want to just let everyone know that I just went through the attendance, and you've lost quorum for this meeting. So you, oh, well, you all can't vote anyway. So. <laughs> Okay, then well, that makes life so that it's, one. It's an but, but, issue, but does that include me, Lucian? It might. Well, because I can tell you. How did you and I got to six? I think. Let me just double check. One, two, one, two three, four, five, six. Six. It's only six. Yeah, including you, Tammy. Six, and you need seven for quorum. Anybody hanging out in the no, so I, I think that it's automatically then put as said for tabled. Mm -hmm. but, but I think it's worth discussing some of these. Can we keep talking? But yes, yeah. we won't vote on it. But if we can keep talking, you I have cannot. a lot of time. I would like to because we you we can have talk, time but you can't it. vote on anything. But yeah. Yes. And what I would highly suggest yeah. is that the working group for Jeff and Bob and Betty recently jumped off, but maybe he'll be back. Maybe he fell off. Yeah, I think he fell off. I'll have to leave at seven fifteen. For Bob, Jeff, and Betty, they should be taking notes, um, much like Betty did for um, mm. transportation the other night. You know, so you can go through all the bullet points one by one, and make sure that it's a clean and concise, um, well 
noted clear resolution. Yeah, and, and um, I was actually, I mean, I've made an outline uh, of what I think the resolution is currently drafted covers and, and maybe it's worth just going over. Yeah, let's go through it. I would love that. I, I would love to spend the time talking about it so we can iron things out as much as possible. So then you have a laser focus as to where you need to go. So and the, what you need to look at, but, but let me just say this information and on that what, note. You're going by. Okay, okay. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you for, for your input. I appreciate it. So, so the, let me give you information about the homeowners coalition. So the homeowners okay. coalition is made up now of the 18 condominium buildings in Battery Park City. That has been in existence and been negotiating with the Battery Park City Authority for what did um, Dan say for five years. It it's maybe maybe longer. They have had negotiations. The Battery Park City they have made demands. The Battery Park City Authority has given them a. Um, you know, some, uh, you know, counter demands or counter Ooh, whatever proposals, whatever yeah, yeah. Counter proposals. Um, I, um, I don't know if they formally rejected them or they've just been talking about rejecting them. I don't know where that goes for that because part of this is everybody's not telling anybody what's going on. Same kind of like with gateway where nobody knew what the hell was going on, except I don't know who left rack and, and, and Barry Park City authority. I so, just. I'm happy to give you insight, Justine. I don't want to jump in until unless you you need me to, but let me know if you'd like me to. Yeah, is that So that's the official negotiating group. Yes. Is that Dan speaking who yes. set up? It's, yes, please jump in. Give me because you have been yeah. part of it. That is the official negotiating group. Yeah, so the batter homeowners coalition, um, each of the 18 boards, which there's 18 condominiums in Battery Park City are a member of each board elected to be a member of it. Each board president is a representative who's regularly communicated. Each board even paid a fee to be a member of it. And each board agreed to um, negotiate jointly because frankly, um, the top line issues are, are the most important ones and that's the only way they're gonna get addressed. Um, and if it does, and the authority doesn't necessarily want that. They want to take advantage of um, the buildings who are at an immediate reset and somewhat desperate. But frankly, we've all agreed that the best approach is to negotiate together on this, um, because what what's applied to the first one, they're going to try to apply to the rest. The, the, the process up to this point is we've met with them multiple times. We give them what we're looking for. We try to be very reasonable about it. Um, they come back with completely unreasonable expectations, um, many of those which could not be even adopted by boards um, because, frankly, they have the upper hand unless the elected officials come in. And to give you an example of one of the things they requested, they came back to the boards um, and, and said, outside of not addressing the ground lease extension, which they have themselves said publicly to this committee, in fact, BJ Jones has said it about a year ago, I think it was over a year ago at this point, that they could extend the leases. Um, they've said they've to they they've added additional fees. They wanted to impose a flip tax, which the boards could not even do. Their their counter offers have been so um, unreasonable that it's not even a a negotiation. It's really just bad faith. That's that's all it is. So we've had back and forths. We usually respond to them right away. The homeowners coalition it takes them six to seven months and probably a couple more hundred thousand dollars to to someone's friend who's the consultant because like i said they've hired the consultant and we go nowhere five years of that um has occurred so you, you mentioned top line issues i i, I th i've heard two issues and i just want to make sure there's not anything else one is the ground rent is too high and it's going to and under the escalations it will continue to go too higher and the other issue is the expiration in 2069 is there any other issue those, those are those are the most important issues for the 18 members. That's, you know, the top issues. Pilot is an issue, but that's an issue with the city. So that that doesn't have to do with the BPCA. And um, in essence, what that issue is is the way our um, what pilot is is a payment in lieu of taxes. So it's the equivalent of property taxes. And like elsewhere in the city, um, condos have to pay property taxes, and they are calculated based on. A, a preset formula which assumes that every building is a rental building and certain yeah, operating I'm familiar, expenses. I'm familiar with okay. all that. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So the, the ground leases, the cost that is paid for ground leases is not considered a expense for purposes of the pilot determining pilot assessed value. So in essence, we're taxed on the tax, but that's a that's the third issue. But for BPCA, it's extension of the ground leases. 
and the actual ground lease amount that needs to be paid. Right. So, I mean, so basically, the the the, the um, wherefore solution, if we put it up, the, the the therefore be it resolves is basically saying that relate to the BPCA and ground rent. It's basically saying extend the lease till twenty one sixty eight and cut back the get rid of the resets without any um, um, conditions. So no flip taxes, no nothing, and cut if you freeze right there, Lucian, and then stop the ground rent increases. To 1% a year, or the rent guidelines, whichever is lower, or maybe 2%. But if I ask for 2%, they'll give me 5%, you know, or 3%. So I'm asking for one. That's why we're going with the lower number with the idea that Betty, in, in your committee last night, Tammy brought it up, you know, don't ask for what you want, ask for a little bit more than what you want, and maybe you'll get what you want. Well, well okay, so, so <laughs> just in Dan, if, if I could just jump in really quick. Um, yes. And I think this is a good moment, or as good a moment as any, to just say that. Um, yeah, a couple of days ago, the, the board received word that the, um, the, the, the mayor's um, the city property tax reform commission had issued its recommendations and is looking for comment. So I'm going to be working with Pat to see if we can't get uh, that on the quality of life committee agenda, um, which is for to everyone here. Um, the quality of life committee is the, the committee that uh, does general affordable housing issues. For the district uh, to have them uh, weigh in on the uh, recommend recommendations, and um, I'll certainly make sure that they consider um, the the property tax formulation not taking ground rent into account. Can can I throw something else out to you? Because I'm actually loving that you um, said that. Because I was thinking of this. What I appreciate that Betty and Jeff, and um, I think Bob too was asking for more time. What if we table the table this? Which we're tabled anyway. We can't vote on it now. I get that, but bring it up again because part of the discussion in here does involve pilot. Bring it up again as part of the um, quality of life committee later this month, and this way it can maybe, if in fact you guys are ready to, to move forward or to opine on it and to give some information and opinions um, for that committee. At the end of the day, I think you need to show up and actually give okay. some information because the ground rent is important. And then the pilot, um, Detta, you are so well versed. You gave you gave me a uh, hour long education, and um, when we talked, and and I still my mind is still blown by it all. And and, and I appreciate your information. So there's a, there's a lot here, and and I do appreciate that. For me, I've been living this and breathing this for so long that I understand it. At least the ground rent, and I understand what I want, where I want to go, and I know all the information. I appreciate that not everybody is aware of all the information. It's all out there, and and it can be um, uh, accessed pretty quickly. But um, yeah, I, I have a question about the extension. I mean, Battery Park City Authority uh, only has a lease itself until twenty sixty nine. That's so. what I thought too. I'm and here we ask for that to be extended as well. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I see that. I do. I, see that. I, do. I do. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I think that's that's my understanding too. And yeah, they can't give us what they don't have. But they, right. Have, right. but they have said that they have a ability to extend the ground lease. So I'm not sure what the heck that yeah. means. The, so, the only other sort of food for thought point that I would put in um, uh, is that um, it, it, you'll remember. Uh, the various hotly contested uh, gateway resolutions um, and the, the resolution the Tenants Association asked for there did not ask for support for a particular negotiating position, but asked for support for the conclusion of negotiations to the satisfaction of both sides. But uh, was it concluded to the satisfaction of both sides? I'm not going to. Mm. My Certainly to the majority of tenants in Gateway, that's a majority of QRS but, tenants in Gateway, it, it was. But uh, all of the con all the affordable ho housing will be gone by 2030. That, there'll be, that's, there'll that's, be no more. How that, is that? that that's, look, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, uh, relitigate the, the, the QRS agreement, um, but no. my, my point is a more narrow one, and, and, and that is um, the community board is, is General as, as sort of an institution. Remember, we're not we're asking for the full board to vote in favor of a resolution. Um, it, it doesn't generally 
come down on a particular, you know, micromanaged negotiation position. Um, uh, but but uh, generally, sometimes it does, as opposed to principles that the that the that that should be uh, resolved. It's food for thought. I'm not I'm not advocating yeah, one way no. or the other. I'm just saying this this is an unusual resolution, in in historically. Um, which may make it more difficult to succeed with the full board, um, it's uh, be, because it is it, because it asks for a specific negotiating position, which may turn out to be something that even the negotiating parties, you know, move past as the negotiations go on. I don't, I don't know. It's I, 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 I'm, I'm not weighing it for no. or against these positions. I'm just as sort of a conceptual proposition. I will tell you, Jeff, that the positions that are presented in here, first of all, we have a different approach. Uh, um, I hear what you're saying and I appreciate that. I, I it is not my way to be um, general. It has not worked for the homeowners coalition going forward this way, the way that they have been going. I think that they need support and they need some guidance as to what is um, out there. I think that we are an advisory committee and an advisory board, and nobody has to listen to anything that we say. But I do think it is our responsibility as a representative of the community to always present what is the strongest argument and advocacy for that community. And within reason, because at the end of the day, nothing that is being presented, nor any of the propositions proposed by the Homeowners Coalition or the Battery Alliance in any way is saying that the Battery Park City Homeowners condo owners or condo buildings will not continue to pay the ground rent, not continue to pay the pilot, and not continue to, to be generating a surplus and be a cash cow for the city. No, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I, I just want to be clear. I'm, I'm not saying that's not a reasonable position. I'm just saying as a, yes. as a matter of process, it is more difficult to get approval of a majority of a 50 member board if you're asking them to approve a particular negotiating, you know, narrowly defined negotiating position as opposed to approved general principle. But I also now, maybe, you, maybe you will get the maybe yeah. maybe the maybe it's persuasive enough that even the particular negotiating position will win a majority support. Well, I think that that's all, that's my only point. I said it's harder to get approval. That, of that's that's fair. Like that. And yeah. I guess what I'm relying on is you and Betty and um, Bob to pull together the facts. To be able to present to, to to support at least the the um wherefore where whereas is and then when we come down to the therefore be it resolved I, I don't think it's wrong to get a consensus which is what this pretty much is of what the homeowners coalition and the other groups in um battery park city are asked condo owner groups are asking okay, for. okay. That, right. that's where i'm coming from but i am going to i'm, I'm pushing it but not I'm pushing against you, but not forcing. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not saying I'm against yeah. any of these points. I I'm just agree. saying this. Not, yeah. you, yeah. you want more time and more information and more time yeah. to digest, and I respect yeah. that. Thank you. No, and I appreciate that. And Jeff, you know that I respect your position, and it's important to hear oh. all of it because, as oh. you say, um, nothing of this is easy. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But Daddy, your hand is up. Please weigh in. You have to unmute yourself, Data. Okay, thanks. Hey, I just want to say two things. One is that this affordability crisis is not unique to Battery Park City. Um, there are condos and co-ops all over the city where either their maintenance or the combination of their common charges and their taxes is you know, just slightly over what they would get in rent for that same unit because rents have gone down so much. Um, secondly, I, th I think what Lucian brought up is very important. The, the fact that the mayor's office came out with that, um, that report on suggested changes to property tax, that's really huge and it's actually not good news because, mm -hmm. I mean, so I, you read it. I haven't read it yet. I've been doing uh, this. I, you know what? I've read so many different reports, but if it's the one I'm thinking of, it, it just suggests raising taxes on the properties right now that have a, ta a cap on them that keep them lower, such as class one and class two, A, B, and C. 
you know, which are 10 yes. units and fewer buildings. So I just think it's very important though, that it's great that Lucian brought that up and it's very important that this community board look at that and uh, opine on it because, you know, that could potentially be big changes for the city and, um, yeah, right. Yes. I mean, the, the taxes, you know, are going to be your pilot is going to mirror what taxes are. Exactly. So that's no, so important. That is so it. important data because you, because you're exactly right. And Mariam, I hope you're paying attention because that really is in the purview of the quality of life committee. And something that I find kind of offensive is, is we have, we, we condo owners. So get the, we out of it. Condo owners and co-op owners large condos and corporate owners have borne the brunt of the of property taxes and the increases that have been going forward and the class one like you know the white picket fence houses hat single family homes and smaller uh, multiple dwelling homes have been um uh, spared that but to put the burden on them does nothing that does not move the ball down the court. The problem here is that everybody is looking to be revenue neutral and it can't be. You've got to make a decision. You, the government, we, as a community board have to make a decision that some things are sacrosanct and keeping a roof over people's heads is sacrosanct. You cannot take their homes away, whether it's the, the, the you know, the, the, the slum Lord that's taking the, the house away from them because they keep raising the rent or whether it's the government that's saying we want to pay. For something else, so we're going to tax you until you can't stay here anymore. It's very frustrating, and either we're going to make a make a decision as a community, as a country, so that's where we're going to go, or we're not. But this is the argument that I'm propounding and proposing. Well, un un unfortunately, though, the city can't run a deficit. I mean, the city can't print money, uh, and uh, so uh, if they lower the taxes on somebody, they've got to raise it on somebody else. Or else, just so spending. frustrating. I know. <laughs> so, so I know. it's got to come from someplace. I'll definitely send the link out for the um, the report to everyone on this committee and everyone on, on quality of life. Thank um, you. You know, I, I mean, based on my, you know, what Lucian, I think I understand. Can you of me too. Yeah, of course, Dada, of course, um, we, we definitely need your eyes on it. Um, but, you know, if, if the tax levy is set and they're raising taxes on class 1. Um, buildings, um, effectively, that could reduce the tax overall tax burden. On the class 2 buildings, uh, Dada, does that sound right? I, I think that's probably the point, but yeah, had Dada. Yeah, I mean, or it could at least reduce the need to keep increasing the tax burden on the class too. But I don't want to say anything, you know, till I've read the report and right. see okay. what are the recommendations. I'll send that There's to you also now, something, uh, Lucian, that you may want to look into as part of the larger conversation. I don't remember the name of the tax, but there's a proposal um, out of New York State, the Assembly and the Senate to increase or to add a tax specifically to co-ops. Really? That was, that, was part of, that was proposed as part of the, the budget and we talked to Kavanaugh's office and they said that that was probably that was very likely coming out and I didn't hear anything about it after that. So if it, if it hasn't come into effect already as part of the, the current budget that was passed by the state, then I think everyone's probably okay for at least another year. Okay, this, this, now, this. That's, that's a very good point, but, um. Daniel, I'll I see if I can look into that. it and follow up and just confirm. Yeah, uh, Paul, Paul, um, Paul was really on top of it. Uh, was he? Yeah, and he was he was in that conversation, so he may he may be tracking it. So I check it with him for sure. Okay, cool. Thank, thank you. you. No, thank you, Mariama. That's great. All right, maybe we stop talking about this and move on to the next thing so that Pixar, Put Pier, and Krista Robbins can. Get going. Is that fair? Are we okay to stop this right now? Anybody have any questions or anything else? And then we will talk about this more if that's okay with Mariama and Pat at the quality of life committee later this month. And whether it's a resolution or not, I don't know yet at that committee, but I would be I would ask our little um group of Betty, Jeff, and Bob to be prepared to at least try to move this to resolution for next month. Sure. Thank you. And I appreciate and I appreciate your volunteering and I'm sorry to dump that on you. But thank you. Uh, I, I have to uh, add uh, that this last discussion on uh, pilot actually sort of supports what you were saying before about being specific on 
negotiating positions because what we say about pilot in this resolution is not specific. It's very general and talks about equity. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> equity may mean that condo and co-op owners have to pay more taxes rather than less. So there is yeah, something yeah. <laughs> There is something about being specific. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. there is totally that. And 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 yes. So yeah, I, I again what's gonna happen is gonna happen, but I, I feel as if if we don't ask, we're never gonna get it. But anyhow, no, thank you. And thank you so much, Jeff, for engaging in the dialogue with me and for Betty for engaging in the dialogue and Detta and Judy and everybody else who piped it, who piped it and, and, and Bob who's not here. But thank you, because I know I'm very um, passionate about this. So I appreciate you putting up with me. Thank you. Um, next, Lucian, maybe we can let um, Krista speak, right, and move on. Oh, look at that baby in the background, Nick. Let me see that baby. Let me see that sweet baby. While the baby is coming on screen, uh, I yeah, dropped back. a link we'll, to we'll the report back. in the chat. Oh, there we go. Oh, hello, little oh, sweetheart. Baby. Oh, you are so cute. Thank oh, you. She just, woke up. she just woke up from a nap. Oh, she's, oh that's not good. Oh, this hour, this to bed. Well, yeah, she didn't take a nap today and then she All took right. a late nap and we thought maybe she was down. Yeah. And now she's oh, up. you're going to have fun tonight, Nick. All right. <laughs> hey, not any more fun than I have at the Battery Park City Committee. Yeah, there you Meaning, go. You I'm that. sorry. Oh, you. <laughs> Um, very briefly, Justine, just a couple of things for the record. I don't yes. want to belabor the point, but uh, yeah, please. I'm so sorry. Thanks, yes, you certainly should thanks say for, something. For, for, you know, having the conversation, of course, this is exactly where the kind of these kind of discussion should be taking place. And Jeff and Betty and Bob, I welcome you to, to jump in as well. It's uh, as Justine had said, it's not nothing of this is easy. So we are uh, committed to doing it. Um, as BJ had said a little while ago and in our strategic plan. This is something we have indeed been working at for for some time. And again, we like you wish it were as easy, um, easier than it is, but it is, uh, you know, we spent about an hour now talking about 1 resolution in a single committee with 6 members. Multiplying that across 18 calendar boards for the next 50 years, you can understand why. Sometimes it gets a little complicated, but very quickly for the record, we are interested in extending the master lease past 2069. BJ has said that of course. That is something that is 50 years out. The things that certainly are more of, uh, not that that's unimportant, but the things that are kind of more urgent are things like we discussed, like ground rent resets, which for some buildings are coming up. For most buildings, they're only about 10 years into what was a 30 year agreement. So while not unimportant to them, I do think it's maybe not the, the most accurate of characterizing that we're dividing and conquering. We're focusing on the buildings that we know have these things coming up, but we're committed to working with all buildings um, on the particular portion of the total kind of freight that a owner pays each month, right? So very briefly, Jeff, if it's helpful to you, roughly 48% of what a Battery Park City homeowner pays each month goes to pilot, which the Battery Park City Authority, as we know, has nothing to do with. We collect it. But blaming us for that is like blaming the postman for the cost of a stamp, right? All we're doing is collect, right. collecting it, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, myself. totally fair. Like totally fair. Another 36% of what you're paying each month is coming from the common charges that your building sets. So, you're building maintenance and operations. The final 16% is kind of the nut of the issue here with respect to ground rents. And that's exactly what VJ and the team are committed to. To address it, especially for those buildings that have kind of those those increases that are that are scheduled in. Um, as Jeff had astutely noted earlier, though, back in the 2011-2012 deal, again, it's not like all the buildings are starting in the same place anyway, right? They were at different points. So what you needed to first do was make sure they all got to kind of a level playing field because if you're going to increase everyone at a set amount, they all kind of have to be starting at roughly the same amount. So as a result, as Justine had noted. Some of the buildings in 2011, 2012 were already paying very, very high uh, rates. So when that 2011, 2012 agreement came in, they paid less. Some other buildings came in paying extraordinarily low rates. And as a matter of being like Justine's building, so as a matter of being fair to some of the other buildings, you know, you couldn't just say, okay, sure, sure, just 3%. The building was already paying so much less than another building was already paying. So as Jeff said, it's, it's not always as easy as saying, oh, just everyone negotiate together. Each building, I think, will have its own set of interests. And that's what we're interested in making sure we're addressing and certainly trying to prioritize, though not diminishing, prioritize the buildings that have the most immediate resets um, coming up. So we're committed to it and we look forward to continuing 
the conversation. But I did want to make sure that those things were uh, were clear. We're committed to doing it and committed to uh, this wonderful neighborhood. So thank you. No, Nick, thank you so much. And and yeah, you're exactly right. At this moment today, except for the maybe two or three buildings with the resets that are imminent, the um, pilot is a small percentage of what people are paying monthly annually. However, ground rent. three yeah, ground rent. Sorry, ground sorry. Rent. Yes, thank you. The ground rent, what people are paying, the, the pilot is what is the biggest concern today. The ground rent will be a bigger concern tomorrow, but 3% increases a year are a lot. And, and that is something that I think the reason why even the buildings who are not facing the um, imminent uh, reset, they're hurting now, whether it's COVID, whatever else, it, they're hurting now. And every little bit helps. Cause that's, that, that is the point of my urgency, but I thank you and. To be continued, but thank you. Thank yeah. you for that, Justine. No, thank you. Um, all right, should we talk to Krista? Yes? Hi. I feel so I feel so flippant now after that conversation about my mini golf project. So necessary to, to bring us down now. Make us happy, Krista. Make I us feel, happy. I feel quite flippant, I have to tell you. Um, I'm gonna try to share. I, I I'm so used to using Zoom, so I've not I've not used WebEx. I will see maybe has to make you host i have no idea I, well I got let, me, let me see what i can do and just tell me if you can see it oh i see you're trying to stare so it's that's happening good. there you go okay great okay so let me just say so i'm a health kitchen girl but my son goes to um is 89 and he is a uh he's with the downtown giants with football and basketball and so i love the neighborhood and I'm there more than I ever thought I would be. So we are Rockefeller Productions. Um, we specialize in family entertainment. We do, you know, theater and film, and we are are branching out into putt putt and these live events. So we were the company that was behind Paddington Bear at the DR2 Theater um, and the Very Hungry Caterpillar Show, which we also did a version of the Caterpillar Show at the South Southport, um, the museum, the the Seaport Museum. So we have licensed, let me see if I can get this to load. We have licensed um, an 18 hole mini golf course from Pixar, which is based on the uh, Pixar movies. Let's see if I can get this to load. So this has been running in Australia now for a little over a year, completely sold out. Um, people just flock to this. Let me go to my next picture. Um, we've been working on this for about a year. We got the license. We've been trying to find the right place for it. Um, we have solidly been on a six month uh, um, tour of the city trying to find the best place. We've looked, we looked at Brookfield. We looked at a couple of Battery Park City places. But when we, when PRA was presented to us, I mean, it is just so absolutely perfect for us. So this is the ground plan that we've got. Can you guys still see that as I move through? Okay, great. So that's my production supervisor has has mapped that out um, down at Pier A. I mean, it is by its physically distance, it's COVID safe environment. I mean, our top priority is keeping the staff safe, the patrons safe. We're we're doing timed tickets, and there's a cap on the number of players that can be on the course at any given time. We, of course, will have the sanitizer sta stations located on site, physical uh, distance. We'll have staff that make sure that people are on each hole, you know, one at a time. Um, we will sanitize all the golf equipment between all users. So once they get through to the 18th hole, those balls automatically go into a machine that sanitizes that and then their, their um, actual um, putt putt. Uh, we'll bring in security. We'll have 24 hour security that we are happy to work with the vendor that's already contracted by the park. And the biggest thing that we want to do, let me go through our safety protocols. So again, we have these, these sanitizing guns that we go through. We spray down the entire course and then we do the balls and the clubs. We'll have, everybody will wear face masks on our staff. We will follow CDC guidelines in terms of you know, where we are by the time we open 
with outdoor face masks, but we're, we are proceeding as if everybody will be wearing face masks. Krista, where is it going to be by the pier at the front? Like close. It's, if you, yes. is, is there a place? To, oh, there you go. Perfect. So we'll be, you know, this is just a picture that I took when we were down there. So it's sort of this, this whole section where people are getting their tickets here and we'll have stickers. That are, you know, keeping people 6 feet apart. We have uh, made sure that we've got the 15 foot. You know, fire lane there, people can get through the planters here, but we'll take this space right here, keeping the bike path clear. Um, and our biggest thing that we that we want to do is we really, really want to work with the community. So when we do our shows, when we, whenever we do dress rehearsals or rehearsals, we always bring in schools for free. You know, they provide the buses, but the buses are free. But we want, we, we really want to reach out to these schools in the fall. We will typically open up on a weekday, probably about two o'clock, but we will open early for these uh, elementary schools and middle schools to be able to come and do a free field trip to, for us. So we'll open it, you know, from 10 to, to 1 before it opens up to the public and really, really work with the schools down there. We also are really looking forward to working with the community in terms of. If you are in that zip code. We will always have a discount code, you know, that's on the, the website. Um, we're really excited about it. I mean, after this year of people not being able to get out to get out and this being family fun and it is so huge with millennials who the nostalgia of Pixar um, just coming down. I think it's really, really great. We're super excited. We've been waiting to and their parents. Absolutely. No, absolutely. I mean, it, it is literally, you know, all all generations. It's it's parents and grandparents and the teenagers and and so that's that's what we're looking forward. I mean, we're we were hoping to open July 1st. Um, we're getting pushed back a little bit because of shipping, getting it from Australia and the delays because of what happened in the canal. There's a delay in containers. Um, so that it might be closer to the end of July, but we are really hoping to open in July and run through the end of October. Krista, that sounds so lovely. Um, so when you say programming or you said shows, what kind of shows would you have for mini golf? Well, it's not, it's just oh. our company, you know, we do the very hungry caterpillar show. We do Paddington. Okay. Um, we're about to open a big show at theater row in the fall. So this is just. The putting green, and it's just the 18 hole experience. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, that was just to give you a little background on our on our company. That's great. And how many? So is it three three separate putting greens you're going to have? Is that what it looked like in that picture? 18 holes. 18, 18 holes. holes. Oh, so yeah. you get to go play the whole nine yards. Yeah. That's so yeah, cool. You play, you play the whole thing, and we'll have staff there. So you know, you do you get through one hole, and then you move on to the next, and the next, and. So our staff will make sure that people are moving through their timed tickets. Okay. Um, and then we'll always, you know, keep a, a, a an amount of time where there's walk up. People can come and, and buy tickets right there. Um, so we're, yeah, we're very excited about this possibility. And again, the second we saw Pier A, it was like, that's where we want to be. That is really cool. And. Um, you know, unlike because you sat through the whole conversation at Brookfield, <laughs> unlike Brookfield, that seems like it's our backyard. This is not. <laughs> I mean, it is, but it's not. So, so, so I, I, at least for myself, welcome. I don't have many questions except just do be aware that there are some residential buildings around. So, what time? What are your hours? So, in so when we load in, we've specifically spread our load in so that we will never. So that load in will be. It, it, never past 6 PM, never before 8 AM. Um, our running times, we believe probably 2 uh, to 10 PM on weekdays with us being done at 10. So the last time ticket is 915 because it takes me about 45 minutes to go through. Okay. And, um, and week ends 10 to 10. First course, first one goes through at 10 AM, but again, they're down and out by 10. 10 a.m. is fine. 10 p.m. Yeah. may or may not be great. We'll see. What I guess what I would ask is let's keep in touch with the conversation. And yeah. I also want to hear what the community has to say. But let's keep yeah. in touch. And if there's an issue, would you be willing to cut it back to nine if there if people could? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, it, it in the summertime weekdays maybe you know dark would be great. But again, I 
really don't care. At my, yeah. me, at this point in time, I don't see an issue, but I would love to know what other people on the community think or anybody in the in the community thinks. It's it's a great amenity. Having more things to do is wonderful. Yeah. And it's lovely. Like, how much does it cost? By the way, we're gonna we're averaging about nineteen dollars a ticket. We're gonna do all kinds of family packs. Um, so we're working that out with our marketing team, but um, about it's gonna average out to about nineteen dollars. So per person. So if a family of four would yeah. be nineteen yeah. times four. Yeah, except that we'll we'll work out of like a family of four pack. Got it. Okay. Okay, cool. That's yeah. good to know. Thank you. Um, anybody have any questions? Poor Krista has been so patient and um, so fun. Yeah, no, this is great. Thank you. I hope you learned something about our neighborhood. <laughs> and listen, I go I go through I go through it with Hell's Kitchen. I'm on the there board of like, Hell's Kitchen, so I know. Yes, the, the 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 poor committee has a really loud mouth uh chair so sorry <laughs> but um anybody have any solution you want to say something so please yeah i mean I, it's i feel like it's my duty um just to um warn you um during the summertime there there is uh in the past there's been a lot of um illegal uh ticket hawking for i heard tourists. we heard okay so we so, so they told us this when we had our meeting with parks um we will have signage that basically says, you know, this is the only place to buy tickets or online. Like we will definitely have signage. And and when we were told that by parks, it was a really great thing to know. Um, but yes, we did hear that about the scalping. And maybe on your website to put notice to park the gates because uh -huh. yeah. And just, Good point. And just no, try to um, uh, make contact with the first precinct um, sooner rather than later because Sometimes um, the, the the hawkers can get aggressive if someone says, you know, can you please move out of the way or what have you. And so we, we just want to make sure that um, you have you know quick access. If you're seeing patterns, you can Great. report that to the first precinct. Of course, you can also tell Pat and he'll tell the first precinct because he's amazing. But, um, you know, it, it's just something that we, we want to be proactive with because I, I have uh, I was talking to some tourists. Uh, in lower Manhattan um, Monday, and you know they've already been um, engaged by illegal ticket hawkers. Oh, wow. and, um, I pointed them towards the statue ticket, you know, <laughs> ticket line, the official one. But uh, you know, it's it's as people come back, they'll they'll come back too. Yeah, I mean, it was really good advice when we heard it the first time, and we will we will work really hard on our website and signage and just to do the best that we can. Yeah, because that's a lot of money for them to then spend, and then um, and so and Pat, you're online. You can unmute yourself if you want to. Um, you guys are are the Allied Universal is in, in charge of the security by PRA. Yep. So um, yeah, that would be something. Maybe at the beginning stages when you guys do set up, maybe having someone stationed there just to kind of have an eyes on who you can go to and talk to. And so we will we will reach out to Allied and we will use them as our vendor so that it's yeah. it's really seamless. That that's great. No, that would be helpful. And Pat, I mean, any insight? Because again, what we could do to avoid um, bad situations. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> bad situations on all sides. You know, yeah. I would love. And, well, and I, I do John, think that allied folks are good. Down at Pierre, we have so, we have somebody stationed there all the time, uh, twenty four seven. There's a safety ambassador there, so right. you're going to be on basically the plaza there. Yeah. So basically, when they're talking about uh, the ticket vendors, the scalpers, yeah. uh, the illegal people, uh, basically they were dealing with uh, the tickets for the boat out to the Statue yeah. of Liberty, and uh, these bus rides around yeah. around Manhattan. So uh, we try to keep them off the plaza, uh, but they will be in Battery Park, right? The historic Battery Park, which is that two steps up. Yeah, in the plaza yep. that's considered, yep. you know, and uh, the people line up for the Statue of Liberty boat. Yeah, on that path, that's exactly two two steps up. So, uh, don't know how uh, busy it's going to be this year for the boat, but sometimes that line does go all the way out onto that path. Yeah, just to that's let you a good know. point. That's, yeah. that's actually, though, in historic Battery Park, where you have everything drawn up is actually on the, what we call the plaza there. Right. Yeah. And we'll have our staff, you know, walking through and, you know, making sure people are getting tickets from the right place. 
So it was really good information to get. Yeah, because I think in the past there was some aggressive action on the pipe. Yeah. I mean, so so it was a little bit yeah, dangerous. People have been accosted, and Krista, yeah. if if you if you need help working with horn blower and uh, line management, if 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 you know, God willing, people come back in droves, um, mm -hmm. let, let us know, and community board one will be uh, your your resource uh, okay. as well as Great. the BBCA. Yeah, because it's a good thing, and and we really don't want trouble, so that's a good thing. No. Um, yeah, yeah. Cora Fung in the chat has a question, so Cora, go ahead if you unmute her, Lucian. Go ahead, Corey, you're unmuted. Cora from Council Member Margaret Chin's office. Uh, you say you met with Parks. I just want to make sure, do you also talk to the Battery Conservancy that actually designed the park that's on the east side of that plaza? That's Battery Conservancy. And my second question is, do you also talk to the Lions downtown as well? This the beat in Lower Manhattan. And usually the Alliance downtown has their mobile or uh, like a information booth. It's a mobile information card that will be parked just right off Pier A on okay. the west side before you walk into the park. So these are two important organizations. I want to make sure you are actually connected with them and just inform them and maybe just partner with them. I will, I will say we haven't spoken to them um, in terms of, you know, we're relatively new to this big outdoor event experience. So um, I just met with parks and then we had a, we met with them there. We had a zoom meeting with them and now you guys. So we, I will, whatever other steps I need to take, I'm happy to do. That will be Nick. great. And uh, I have a question. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just going to ask this. Nick, can you help Krista get the connections or no? Oh, she, sure. Krista, yeah, yeah. Is that okay? We're talking about uh, historic battery where I and, should, should and say the battery downtown park and the downtown alliance. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Okay, Cora, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Go ahead. Keep Too going. Easy. Chris, I'll send you that information. Thank you. Of course. Great. Nick is here. That's my next question. That PAA Plaza, that's a public space. So this 18 hole putty area, will it be fenced off that the public? Cannot walk through, or will people have difficulties getting through yeah. to the park. You mentioned about the bike bike path. Mm -hmm. uh, there are all these people and the traffic, and when that's the end of, uh, oh, correction, that's the beginning, the beginning of the Heritage Trail, the New York State, uh, and the traffic coming down the bikes, and also people walking through that boulevard from north south right into Pier A. And as Patrick Murphy mentioned, there are all the sorts of people going to the boat. There, there's the docking and the parks, uh, plus all those also that they mentioned. So that's my question about the public space. And I also remember sometimes there will be table, uh, in the last round, there were tables and seatings. Nick, uh, I'm not sure it's because of Pier A or uh, I mean, uh, from PAA's operator, or that's from Battery Park City, or is from the parks slash park conservancy. I would hope the tables take... are still there, right? They look like they might no. still be, but they could still be there. They should still be there. I'm hoping. I'm not. I'm not talking about the wooden benches. I'm talking about the movable tables and seating, just sort of like those that you would see in Brookfield or North Cove. So when we when we were there when we did the walkthrough, I mean we we are taking up this section that is fenced, leaving this all this open for fire lane and trucks. We we're making sure that there's enough space for trucks to get through because I understand that there's construction that's going on what would be behind us. So this is completely walkable. The bike lanes are completely clear. This one section would be fenced off, but it could that fence could be removed if we needed it to, but we are keeping one planter side open. And then this, where this, there was this bar restaurant there that I understand is going to know is going away. That will all be completely empty. I mean, we did not push out at all because at the time when we were doing our plans, we thought that restaurant was going to still be there. There were there were tables over here and um, benches over here. That's all completely completely clear. 
So there's a path to walk through, including the planter. There's this whole side where the restaurant was that's going away. That's all passable. A question, and I guess maybe this is to Nick too, as well as Krista. And then Cora, please keep yourself unmuted and and um, jump in on me. So, all right. So the green area is going to be everything inside the green area is fenced. Correct. So the the walkway. So if you're walking from um, the street, the street is where that white part on the yeah. It's, it's basically you know this sort of catty corner right here. Uh, do it again with your because you're going fast. So so. If you're coming down like the West Side Highway, it's like under the A of ground plan. Ah, okay. So the bike path is here where my cursor is. And so this is all, all clear. Well, yeah, okay. And 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 Nick, the restaurant, because they've made that build out there that that where it's, where it's kind of like colored in black. Is Which that just taken this? down? Because before that, I think it was just seats, but I don't, I don't even know what's that. It was that. open, I believe. I believe it maybe I have to I have to get back and check. Yeah, I have to go look. Yeah. So we were, but, told, know, we were told that's going away, they thought that that was getting like struck down. Because so then somebody who's who can spatially look at this, where would the bikes go? So if you're coming across uh, I guess what I would ask is 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 mm. ways that Oh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to there we go. That's a better picture, maybe. Yeah, sorry. Go back to that one. No, no, sorry. So, there. So the bike, so the bike path is completely clear. It's it's below this this picture. How do people walk? Yeah, well, so because bike, because at this point. Walking. Because so this, this whole so, area, the children and the families, they used to just like hanging out in that space, walking to the parks. So, so now the whole triangle the... will be fenced. I just want to get an understanding. Yeah, so again, yes, we would be How using this. Walk? This, this... help me look in the spatially look at this. So I cannot walk if I'm walking along the boulevard. Uh huh. Not path with the same direction anyway. So once yeah. I cross the street. You can make this left I'll, right here and walk through the plaza this way, so, you know, right in front of the building. So you can certainly get through the plaza and then that is open. That right here, we're taking up this section. So you're taking up the whole triangular area. I mean, yes, so, I mean, you so, can certainly get through and it's and it's you know how it's curved these planters we're going up against the planters and around to these you know cinder blocks basically so the bike lane is open there's a 15 foot fire lane which trucks and people can pass through and we're taking up this you know like 5600 square feet in here but how there's many people, certain... how many Laura. people Cora, do you uh, do you remember where the artwork was displayed on the plaza down yeah. there with the crystals? Right yeah, that's, right that's the area. That's the yeah. area that they're going to be occupying. Right so the, the whole front, the whole front of uh, the PRA where the restaurant was, that's going to be left as a walking path based on her diagram. Yeah. Okay, I so people can that. walk can walk right through over there. Right. I mean, we, we did it very, we, I mean, when we did this draft, we absolutely made sure that people could get through, the trucks could get through for construction. We had the fire lane that the bike, the bike path, path was clear. We are flexible with our footprint. So if there is a problem, we can certainly squeeze in a little bit. Um, well, Krista, maybe we could do a walkthrough at some point, not no rush to do it, but maybe we could do a walkthrough. Cora, if you, you've raised such great um, points here and we could do a walkthrough just to get the parameters. Because I, I know where Cora is going with all this, and and I am just terrible at the spatially understanding it. I am yeah. horrible. Uh, but um, part of the is, issue is is that you've got bikes and people. So what they what, what the bike lane is really bikes and pedestrians. And so we're just, not, yeah, we, we and wouldn't. How many, how many people will there be? Uh, like at this at one time, how many people will be in that fenced area? Ten. 20 or nine. I mean, we're or, doing it in in hour uh, long blocks. You know, we, we're letting in a, like 15 people per 15 minutes and they can go through. So it's all with CDC regulations right now. I mean, uh, basically uh, 100 people could go through in an, <laughs> excuse me, in an hour. 
I I don't want to go there, but I do want to mention safety. Mm -hmm. Oh, 100%. Uh, not security. Safety. COVID safety, you mean, or something else? Safety. Um, remember what happened one Halloween day that happened? Oh, yeah. Uh, and where the truck I don't know how drove uh, down the bike path. If, yeah. you, if you have 50 people just like clustering in that small triangular area or they just yeah, they would never be clustered we've we've worked it out so that they literally are moving from hole to hole to hole and that's part of what our staff does is they sort of keep the flow of people moving um i understand again, that because i know there's manhattan youth at pier 26 how the the party how people like they line yeah. up they line up outside for tickets like right now like this past weekend, I've been noticing uh, Pier 26 with that one, people are lining up. They're just lining up like 20, 30 people waiting right. and then move to the next section. While there's right. there are lots of people inside families, young people, they were paying, playing uh, golf inside and moving along. And then the line just keep going depending on the on the weather. So right. there will be, uh, I would expect it, it's really fun and it's attractive. So there will be a huge crowd out there. Yeah. Uh, and we have these little stickers people. that will keep people, will keep people apart, you know, the, the six feet apart. Uh, but as people, stuff. they're charging so $19 per person. So it may not be as crowded as you, well, it may, but it may not be as crowded as you think. I don't think it's a thing for kids to be doing. It's for people to come all over. It's nice. You go to the carousel, you know, $5. Oh, yeah, yeah, that part, but that the carousel is free. This is $19 to, then, per person to play golf. There's always people who can afford to play. <laughs> you don't want to rip your kids off these uh, fun opportunities. But I'm not, talk I'm not just mentioning the COVID safety. Um, just, I just want to mention, make sure you have enough blocks or bowlers there just to protect the people. 100%, yeah. I'm hoping the Battery Park City Authority has put those blocks up and that protects the cars from people. I think that they did that all on the Esplanade and they protect, that that's what those big blocks are, but I, I don't want to speak to that. I mean, they're, I, I they're, good point. yeah, those blocks are there because I know we, we, I spoke to them about when we load in, like th those actually have to get moved because right now a truck can get on yeah. the plaza. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah. The, um, sadly, because of the sadly, world of yes. It is protected by those yeah. by, by you guys. I, I think yeah. so. I think the Battery Park City Authority has done a really good job of protecting, the, you know, the Esplanade along and 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 the bike path, whatever the Greenway. Yeah. Oh, in yeah. Battery Park City, and then the Hudson River Park Trust and whatever has gone up. Just make sure, sure you check with YPD for the security. Yes. Yeah. Really don't Excellent want points, Cora. Don't Thank you so much. I don't want any vehicles run into it. That's yeah. Us blatant as I can. Thank and you. again, you know, we, we are flexible. We really are. So I'm happy to do a walkthrough. And in fact, I would love to do a walkthrough. Yeah. Um, and we'll take any notes that you have. Uh oh, you're muted. We could push it out a little bit, but we could we can we can arrange something and I would love that just to get a spatial idea. And then anybody, you know, we can talk about it and see because that would be helpful to me to put it in perspective. But again, congratulations, good luck. And Thank you. And again, the last thing to say is we really, really do want to work with the community. I mean, we, we really do in terms of like getting the schools in and doing discount code, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that we would love to do with the community. So once it gets closer, maybe you want to do do a presentation, maybe the July meeting for the for the um, Youth and Education Committee, making a little blurb for it, because it'll be good advertising for you. Too. Yeah, I'd love to. Lucian can help you get get you in touch with stuff, and then okay. Nick too. But thank you, thank you so much, and thank you for so putting our whole presentation. My pleasure. And now Kevin, right? Yes, Kevin McCabe, you're up. Good evening. Thank you. Just ready coming. DPC talking right. about security. Uh, uh, great. Time. Nick, do you want to say anything or to pick things up or I'll just frame it. I do so much okay. talking as it is, but Justine, <laughs> thank you. And Lush, uh, Lushin, thank you for getting us on the agenda for this. So very briefly, um, ready BPC, which Kevin will go into, uh, is actually in the strategic plan I had mentioned earlier, and it's about making sure that battery park cities residents, um, 
can be prepared in, in the face of, God forbid, any coming uh, emergencies, whether it be climate related, man made, et cetera. Um, it's an ongoing process. It's meant to be iterative. And what we're looking to do is try and plan out some sessions uh, that we can provide for the community, which are kind of information gathering and sharing. Um, but before we come to you and say, hey, guys, there's a ready BPC meeting next week. We want to say, hey, we're looking to plan one of these meetings. What is it you would like to see in these meetings before we go ahead and plan it? And, you know, in keeping with the close working relationship we have. So with that, that's the general frame. Kevin will give kind of a five minute uh, spiel uh, and then we'll take any feedback you have. And then I should add in addition, if after we're out of this meeting and you're marinating on it, you have some other ideas you want to see send them to us and we will work jointly to make sure that we're planning a date that makes sense for as many people who can attend as part of an, an ongoing effort. Okay, thanks, Kev. Thank you. Thanks, Nick, for the introduction. I appreciate it. Justine, and I thank you for the entire committee for your time. I'll be I'll be even briefer than that, um, frankly. Um, so I just wanted to take a moment, as Nick mentioned, to just to introduce you to this Ready PPC initiative, which in the broadest sense is a public engagement campaign on emergency preparedness. Of course, given the aspects of our community that certainly make us so unique, as well as our vulnerable location, we've launched this initiative to ensure Battery Park City residents are engaged and educated around risk awareness, preparedness, and disaster response. With respect to this initiative, we will serve as a facilitator with the lead agency being our partner at New York City's Office of Emergency Management. Uh, we're working on kicking off this project with an introductory seminar hosted by OEM and BPCA in the coming weeks. Now, typically during these seminars, OEM covers various topics such as what an individual could, should gather in advance to prepare for an emergency, how you can stay informed, what to do in case of a local evaluation, evacuation, et cetera. And we're looking to make this program as tailored as possible for the BPC community, and certainly mindful of the committee's concerns, as well as our Battery Park City Seniors Group with respect to this conversation. We're looking to have a long-term initiative, as Nick mentioned, with periodic seminars taking place throughout the year, which will be recorded and made available online, so there will be ample opportunities to review and reference. Our objective here is to integrate existing emergency preparedness materials from our city and state partners. We're not looking to duplicate efforts as we are certainly not an emergency management organization, yet we still understand the importance of having an informed community. So we're looking sort of with the timeline at the early June, have the first seminar to be virtual given the existing COVID climate, and we're happy to work out scheduling with you over the next few weeks. And as we begin to work with OEM on organizing an agenda for this first kickoff, uh, we're taking this opportunity tonight to simply brief you on the initiative and solicit any feedback or questions you may have tonight or in the coming days. And with that, I will happily take any questions. All right, well, committee members, as you're deciding to raise your hands or not, um, first of all, thank you. This is a great thing. Um, at some point in the past, and maybe Jeff Galloway, you know about this or not, I don't know, but there, there has been a CERT, so um, a mm -hmm. local CERT group. I haven't heard much about it, which is a good thing because it means there's been no reason to hear about it lately. Um, but I don't know if it exists anymore. I don't know anything about that. And that might be a group to coordinate with if it still exists. And, Absolutely. Um, we, Nick, Nick had actually connected me with uh, with uh, Sid, who I okay, good. Sid yep. Right. So okay. uh, we're, we're waiting to hear back, but we'll happily reach out again and to ensure that collaboration. Yeah, just to get a sense because that's kind of what they formed to do, and I guess they kind of joined in. And and this is wonderful. Focused specific specifically on Battery Park City is great. Um, and working with CERT or not, you know, or conjunction with alongside whatever makes sense to you all. Um, it's only a good thing. I mean, I assume having building management of each, you exactly. know, residential uh, yeah. commercial building involved would be a great thing. Um, and, and what's the, I guess, and this is part of the BPCA, obviously. So, so there's a budget associated with it. What's the budget associated with it? We actually have nothing allocated right now. We believe to be low impact on the budget end. It's really just That's facilitating great. conversations with our community through, you know, through our office of emergency management and, you know, the, the state has um, similar agencies. We just want to heighten the awareness of the existing resources that are available. I mean, there's really, I mean, yeah. Which is wonderful. Yeah. Low impact, but it's, it could be very valuable. Yeah. Um, 
let's see, Cora, I don't know, your hand is still raised, but I think it's still raised. So if you want to speak, take it down and put it back up again. And there you go, she's gone, but you can put it back up if you want to. Anybody else have any questions? Up, oh, Betty Kay, good job, Betty, come on up, let's go ahead. Uh, I'd like to hear a little bit more of what you're doing, because then I can better formulate what it is I want to ask. Well, right now we're we're in the very early stages. We're working with o, New York City OEM to put together an agenda for a kickoff seminar that would be the pr primer of emergency preparedness in Battery Park City. So perhaps they, you know, my understanding is they have a standard deck, and they'll go through what folks can do as an individual to prepare for various emergencies. Um, now the point the, the the point of perhaps this conversation is to identify perhaps ways we can tailor it to be specific to Battery Park City's needs. I, okay. Can I yeah. tell you what my concerns are then? Absolutely. As somebody who uses a mobility device, mm -hmm. I know very well that if they put things out, they don't apply to me anyway. I, I'm kind of just out there and it's up to me to figure out what's going on. So about the general dis disabled population, which includes a lot of the elders, Yep. I don't even know that they're identified, and I've asked if even buildings know who they are and where they live, and you tend to get this, oh, that's private, so we don't really, I'm not sure they even know. If there was a fire, if there was a flood, if there was a, I. A, another I terrorist attack. attack. I mean, it does, yes. Good point, Betty. Uh, as far as, you know, what you do with non-English speakers or the deaf who use sign language, I mean, is there a mechanism to even communicate with these people? That's even if you question. found them. We're looking to that. Uh, so that they could all respond, yep. participate. And then I realized how many children and pets are left. Pets can be left for longer periods, not just work hours, but you always hear about people who went away for the weekend and they left some food for their cats and then a fire broke out. And nobody really knew that if there was a fire in that unit or nearby, somebody better enter and look for the cats. So different things about the pets, the children, uh, just a general idea of who's even there to look for. I think right. a lot of people are just plain overlooked. Understood. So that's that's great. Thank you very much. Sure, I'm sure that's on the agenda. Um, and taking what Betty's saying like a step farther in a more macabre direction. I mean, I would love to have the Battery Park City Authority, considering we have all this money, right? <laughs> the cash cow that we are, but um. You know, after 9-11, there were a lot of uh, entities and groups that came in to hum, hum, come help clean up Battery Park City. And that they were made up of workers who were immigrant, not necessarily immigrant, not necessarily English speakers, who are now um, dying of cancer. And I don't know what benefit, I mean, yes, there's a victim's compensation fund, if they're even aware that they could take care, take it, and there's all these different things there, but I would love to have this group, if it's going to be in place, have some sort of a, you know, an idea in their head, at least. I mean, you, you don't want to plan for something that's so horrible again, but you kind of do. And it maybe if it's just on paper, just to start thinking about even more drastic measures. How do you clean up after a hurricane Sandy? I have no idea what the um, uh, environmental impacts, if there would be any of, to, to, in, you know, affecting the people who are cleaning up or whatever else. But, um, you know, in conjunction with what Betty is saying, there's like, there is evacuation in the event of an individual building fire, but there's also evacuation on a larger scale and how this group, if it's forming, can can help um, educate buildings. Because if I appreciate that if I go ask my doorman or go ask my building management, who's who, who in the building is handicapped and who needs to get out or who's got this, who's got that, they're going to tell me, ah, it's none of your business. But you know what? It's, it's, it's your business. It's the building management's business, and at the very least, I would like to have an answer being said that we got this, we got it under control, and, th and that would be a helpful thing. So specific to Battery Park City, specific to any place, but it would be um, just taking what Betty said and, and building it out. Understood. So, thank you. Anybody else? That's a great idea. So, so Kevin, please do come back to us um, if it's helpful. I mean, you know, let us know what comes out of your meetings with, and, and I would ask that maybe include Betty into the picture because she's got some really good thoughts on this. Um, 
Now, would, would, we're looking to, and, and I'll, I'll follow your lead, but we're looking to incorporate the committee in on you know timing of such meeting just yeah. so that so for maximum input. Um, would, would it be like evening or mornings be more beneficial? Is, we can we can we can hash out logistics. You you can know, hash out logistics. Yeah. yeah, I know you guys all are working during your work day, and the rest of us work during the day, so we're free at night. So it's it's a, it's a conflict, but maybe we work for late afternoon or something. Okay, but we'll uh, come together for a few dates and uh, run them by you. And, yeah, um, we'll take perfect. And Betty, go ahead, please. You're on mute, Betty. From my years in the hospitals, there's one other group I forgot. There are many people who are very dependent on electricity. And if there's any kind of outage, they use it to breathe. They use it for their home dialysis. They use it for lots of things and people kind of they use them for rocker beds to keep their skin from breaking down. Lots of things the average person doesn't think about because they're not average people, but it's life threatening for them, even for very short periods. Uh, they should probably be identified and find out do they have their own generator backup? And if not, how to identify them? So if there's a power outage, you know how to get to them and figure out what to do. That's a good idea. Some buildings have a generator, but would they be considered, you know, um, uh, strong enough to if they do the elevators? Would they be able to hook in to help these people? I, I have no idea, but that is a really important piece of information. And that would be the kind of thing where an, uh, an organization, agency, whatever you want to say, such as what you're creating, I think would have the privacy. Or, or, it would be private and still be able to be shared with you all without it's not public information. So I think that's a great idea, Betty. And we don't have a hospital within our borders, but, um, but there are people who need those care that that who, who use those services, oxygen, like you said, and whatever else. That's amazing. That's a really good point. Thank you. All right. Well, I don't see any other hands. I don't see anybody in the um attendee section so thank you so much kevin and yes please do come back let's talk we'll we'll schedule it and, and come back to our meeting and um it's specific to to battery park city but i think it's also um if there's things we could share with the rest of community board one i would be a great thing to share absolutely so, so if we could put something together maybe you know in, in a eventually at the line we could put a report out where it's like little highlights so that would be sure a thing. useful thing because thanks so much Justine. about is of essential to everybody. So no, thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. All right. So if we can move on to the next thing and, and finish up in the next like 10 minutes or 15 minutes, that would be that. 12 minutes. We got 12 minutes for Patrick and Nick. How's that? And we can bring this home before nine o'clock so I can have dinner. Okay. Thank okay. You. Patrick, you, you want to go first or shall I? I'll defer to you, good sir. I have Patrick yeah. first on the agenda so he gets to go first and go home like two minutes before you do. Go ahead, Patrick. <laughs> Okay, uh, you can see on the bottom of Nick's report that uh, <clears throat> dealing with the graffiti, we had uh, none this year uh, for this month. Homeless, there was no interaction with homeless for this uh, past month. Lost and found, we uh, had three. Uh, park rules was at 13. The vendors, we got the uh, ice cream truck back. So we're busy chasing the ice cream truck around. <laughs> around the park uh, and of course now with the uh, nice weather coming we're dealing with the skateboarders just uh, uh, dealing with that issue coming back and uh, we're dealing with more obviously homeless in the park uh, but like I said if you see a homeless and they're not uh, acting properly please call us don't try and approach them or whatever as we're seeing the homeless uh, having more uh, emotional problems, shall I say, and uh, they're more violent than the ones that we've had in the past. That's uh, pretty much it from me. Uh, we did give out 21 masks, and uh, as dealing with location checks, we did 2,757 location checks the last month. Okay, Nick, you're up. So, uh, Patrick, before we go on, I have a quick question for you. Um, with the lost and found, you never found a dog or anything, did you? No, 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 no dogs. Uh, we, only, we only find uh, 
stuff. Skateboarders. Skateboard. Yeah. Skateboarders, uh, you know, right? Yes. Yeah. Scooters. Uh, basically, anybody, they don't keep it long up at the ball field anymore. So it mm -hmm. only sits at the ball field for maybe a week. And mm -hmm. then they send it down to our office. So down at I, have, 200. I have a question for the authority and for, and for um, Pat to see how this could work out. Um, one thing that I've heard in, in Miriam, if you're there, um, pipe in and, and sub give me information or whatever. But one thing I've heard in the quality of life committee is that um, bathrooms, public bathrooms are an issue for the homeless. And, and a lot of the complaints that have been coming in, I don't hear them in Battery Park City of, of uh, uh, people relieving themselves on the streets. Um, lots of dogs, but not, but not not people, but around our area, it seems to be a big issue, and and it seems like it's picked up in um, you know, quantity, times, whatever the hell the word is. Um, but I, I think it's because bathrooms in the time of COVID have been closed. What's the right. deal with the bathrooms and our public bathrooms, and what can we do to kind of relieve the situation, <laughs> literally, figuratively, for for, for hey, these people? Justine, and what do we want job. to do with it? Yeah, you're a thousand percent correct, Justine, and and it's not it's the population really of Lower Manhattan that yeah. needs a bathroom, not just the homeless or or houseless. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Because People who just walk and it's in fact for the reason you just stated because of COVID, restaurants and other establishments that normally would let us in, we say, hey, can I quickly use the bathroom? They'd say, come on in. That has come to a full stop. Yeah. Um, in most places. And sometimes even if you are a patronizing spending customer in some of these places, you cannot use the bathroom. And so yeah. obviously if you have no place to to run to, a home to run to, then you're in trouble. Exactly. So so well, I mean, it, it's something that I would I you know, it's it's a balance and I certainly get it. Nick, I'm sorry, Nick. Uh Patrick, when you were speaking, you talked about um, you know, the emotional issues and I've heard that. There's been issues. I, I, there are some people who are just not stable. I don't know what we can do as a battery park city community, but boy, would I love to us for us to figure out. And maybe that's part of what, um. Uh, this new organization can come up and Kevin's organization. I know it's talking about, um, kind of ready BPC, but, but this is something that maybe we can figure out a way to step up and, and address. And help out our neighbors. With that, well, just. Just to let you know, I was also, you know, I attend the open meeting at the first precinct. Me too. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, I heard you uh, speaking at that also. Uh, the homeless issue obviously is all around and a lot of it with the homeless also, besides it being, you know, them being uh, EDPs, you know, there's also the drug use and sometimes you know, you're dealing with somebody that's high on something that you don't even know what they're high on. But uh, as far as the bathrooms, Wagner's been open, Teardrop Bear, uh, Park has been open. Our but office not 24 now. 7, right? Which I don't know. They, no, no, the, bathrooms, the bathrooms are not 24 7. You know, they close, uh, Wagner Park closes around 6 o'clock, Teardrop Park closes later on. Uh, I think they're up to now like eight, uh, seven o'clock where they close up in Teardrop Park. Uh, our office, the bathroom, uh, there's a bathroom open now in our office, you know, and uh, Wagner and Teardrop has been open now for at least, Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, about three months. They're, That's good. Those great. bathrooms have been open. So yeah, they do... first reopened in, uh, actually, I'm looking back at it now. It's crazy to think it's been that long since we're in a perpetual time loop, it seems. But yeah, yeah. The bathrooms first reopened in June. Of last year. Uh, um, wow. Yes. And then in July, yes. uh, the restrooms at the ball fields reopened up. I remember um, talking about from that. 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. So I can, it coincides with whatever the ball field hours are. So yeah. sometimes the, certain parts of the ball fields close at 8, the restrooms close at the same time. But yeah, ball fields, uh, Teardrop and Wagner have been open now for almost, reopened almost now for close to a year. And Patrick mentioned now that the restrooms in 200 Rector, which is where the command center is, is also now uh, opened up for, you know, kids sometimes using the playground or whatever else. We're asking, you know, folks to still maintain a safe distance when they're coming in and whatnot. Wear but, masks uh, and all that stuff. No, yeah. which makes sense. No, that's, a good thing. that's a good thing to know. And I guess Wagner to me seems to be the most um, 
likely to have more transient people walking in. Maybe I'm just being crazy, but I think that so and and they close at six. I'm wondering if they could stay closed. They stay open till as it stays more light out as a, as daylight moves out up until nine o'clock through, through the summer, if that's possible. I mean, you that's don't a have good to question. I, it, I, I can check. Maybe ask for it. I'll check and see what uh, what if anything we can do with tear trap and when. I'm assuming that it, as one goes, the other goes, but I'll, I'll confirm. Yeah, I don't know, but um, okay. it would be something that maybe would be um, helpful to our neighbor neighboring communities and certainly help people who are houseless as well as somebody who's got to go. So no, I appreciate that, and and I appreciate the um, awareness. Betty, is your hand raised about the, about this issue, or if it is, please speak. And if it's raised about something else, please. Speak anyway. You're always welcome. No, and I'll put it down. But in support of what you said, a lot of people I noticed in Rockefeller Park come for the day as a family. So many of them probably roll themselves on the way out. So as long as the park is open, it probably is very useful. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and I appreciate it dark. You're going to want to close things down because it just gets harder to keep clean and and, and just keep safe. But um, if we could kind of keep it and track it to, to daylight hours, that would be so lovely. As a thing, so think about that. Thank you and thanks, Betty. Um, Patrick, thank you. And I made it go on longer. So, Nick, you only have 4 minutes, but I won't make you do that. <laughs> you might be. Four minutes. Okay. See what you can do. All right, uh, Lucian. And as much as you already have the report um, opened up, if you can just flip up to page one, please. I will try to go through quickly and hit some of the some of the highlights. Um, the first thing I wanted to add is we've been leading off now, sadly, for many months, is a kind of look at the the COVID number inc. as the, as a at least a slightly optimistic note. Now is we have. Uh, 16 million cumulative vaccinations have, have been given through New York State. You'll see in the chart there, and that includes 7.3 million who have that had their full series of doses. So that chart is updated daily. That's on the New York State vaccine dashboard that you can download of and for link on to download the and, data from there. And you have and some have good news. Exactly. I was and we say, have some I good see, news. So yeah. scrolling down to thank page two and that. thank you for yeah. that. I didn't want to thank hold you. up and wait. Not that I would ever not want to steal the thunder from the DPC <laughs> committee. Missing the it vaccination was, in better parts city. But it was city. such good it. news. I wanted to get it out yesterday. You also my email blast. There was now a third vaccination site in Battery Park City at the Conrad Hotel. Uh, Goldman Sachs and American Express have partnered with the city to offer a site there. There are two clinics coming up on the 7th and the 14th um, where you it can get your Pfizer vice to make appointments. I it's was easy. on Good. the site and it was, I mean, it was as of yesterday afternoon, it, they were a lot were open for both days. I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to hear it. Yeah, I'm really so, glad to hear it. So that's a good um, Thank you. Our low cost testing in Battery Park City, the trucks are in the process now of leaving as we kind of get more into vaccination. The testing is, although it's still important to get tested. Um, those trucks are, um, steadily kind of leaving, but happy to report that over the course of the. The engagement here it was, uh, roughly 5,000 tests have been conducted across those 3 locations. That was at Pier A, the Harris Unger Memorial and by the New York city police memorial. Po percent positive rates in New York city every day. We are tracking this happy to report that. Especially as compared to last month, we were up over 6% positivity for the city overall. We are now down citywide to under 3%. Battery Park City maintains its historic, uh, historically very strong and strong, I mean, low numbers. We've had two total cases uh, in all of Battery Park City over the past uh, rolling seven day average one case in the north, one case in the south. Uh, if you look back to the very right of that list, in the north for many days, 10282, there were zero cases. It was zero cases for about a week straight, and then I think we had one positive, which sets the next seven days as a one, but it's we're down below 1%. Uh, positivity in each zip code of Battery Park City, which is encouraging. So please continue to wear your masks, get vaccinated, uh, and follow the guidance, which, as noted before, is changing rapidly. So you can take off masks in certain places, but just please continue to be mindful of others and get vaccinated if you haven't yet. Uh, spring programming is back. You've seen uh, the newsletter, you've seen the tweets, but we now have in person programming back. Lucian at the top of page three. Um, we are back with uh, programming for. 
all uh, visitors of all shapes, sizes, and ages. So we have outdoor exercises, we have Zumba, we have kindy rock, nature drawing, art, music, culture, etc. The Sunset Singing Circle, which I know is a big summer favorite, is now back as well. All that information is linked there. I also put a QR code uh, on that on that uh, image as well. So you can simply scan that and be brought right to the calendar of events that's happening uh, almost daily in Battery Park City. And we'll look to expand that, knock on wood, as we get deeper into the summer with an even more fulsome uh, lineup of events. Top of page four, um, you know, we put this one in because it's easy sometimes when you're so close to these things not to realize uh, really some of the aesthetic beauty around you, but you take a step back and just looking at some of these pictures really was stunning to me. So I wanted to make sure we put this in. So the pylons is an art installation, as we know, along the Battery Park City Esplanade, right by Belvedere Plaza, by Martin Perrier, who is himself an award-winning uh, artist that fe featured at the Venice Biennale uh, last year. Uh, and the glass benches are art installations in their own right, right by the Irish Hunger Memorial. Uh, we have been in the process of refurbishing um, and restoring the lighting for those fixtures. And that's just a couple of pictures that you can see how really gorgeous it looks against uh, the night sky. So just happy to tick down some of the things that we are continuing to do to make uh, and keep Battery Park City, in my humble opinion, the best neighborhood anywhere. Um, public art cleaning at the top of page five, just so you all know over the past, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to have some of the routine maintenance and cleaning of uh, our prized public art collection. So if you see folks near the art or cleaning the art or with equipment near the art, they're not doing anything wrong. They're actually just cleaning it to make sure that our public art collection stays uh, in tip top shape. Um, the New York City Police Memorial, that expansion, I reported on it last week that it would be starting. I threw a couple of uh, images or renderings in there now. That is now ongoing. So for the you, those of you who are around uh, Kowski Plaza and that area by Gateway and elsewhere, you will see the site fencing is up and the construction is underway to expand that memorial. Wonderful that it's being expanded, kind of sadly that it has to be, um, but for those who don't know, that is uh, to memorialize the officers who have given their lives in the line of duty. It unfortunately needs to be expanded, but we're doing that. And in a way, and in close conjunction with the original artist of the piece, Stuart Crawford, who's been closely involved with us and with the police department to make sure that that is expanded in a very tasteful way. And that uh, should be on track to open up uh, to be completed by September in time for some of the yearly celebrations or so yearly memorials that take place in and around the memorial. Top of page six, spring tree planting. This is, uh, I know, something I get asked about uh, fairly consistently. You will recall that during Tropical Storm Isaias in August, some of the trees in Battery Park City, especially along Rector Place, were literally torn apart with some of the high winds and other debris that were rolling around. Um, those trees have been delivered uh, and replanted, not just in those areas that were damaged by the storm. The ones that were damaged by the storm have been replaced, but in other areas as well, there's a picture there up on uh, North End Avenue and on Chamber Street of some of the trees uh, that have been uh, replaced. Planting season is roughly twice a year in April and in October. So we did about a dozen or so trees this uh, past week. Uh, and then come October, we'll be doing a second uh, round of trees that, that need replacing throughout the neighborhood. So all part of keeping Battery Park City uh, the place that it is. Parks lawns are open. We know that. We covered that last month. Just a reminder about dogs in parks and making sure they can be on hard surfaces and not on grass, staying on leash, except the dog runs. You all know the routine. Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month is April. We made a note last uh, last month. Uh, Stating obviously our rejection of hate in all its forms, especially toward the Asian and Pacific Islander community that we've been recent, that we're recently experiencing. But we thought it was a nice opportunity now to highlight some of the Asian American and Pacific Islanders we have featured on the Poetry Path, which, as we know, is a partnership that runs through the northern part of Battery Park City, where uh, fragments of certain poems are excerpted on uh, pavers and bench slabs um, and uh, walls and other parts of Battery Park City. That's a really nice thing to take a look at. I put the names there. Uh, keep it wild. We discussed last month. Keep the wildlife in Battery Park City wild. Please do not interact with the animals. Don't feed the animals. Um, please observe them at a distance. And with that, there is the new at the bottom there of, uh, of page uh, seven, Lucian, BPC Wildlife on iNaturalist. This is actually a really cool tool that has just recently been launched. We used to have the Battery Park City Wildlife Census, which will still kind of exist in parallel for a bit. But the iNaturalist tool is 
a uh, an app that is driven all on user generated observations from across the city and country and world. So people in public spaces anywhere can make their observations about wildlife, and then it's shared amongst entities and municipalities and scientists to you know use data to better improve biodiversity of green spaces around the world. So it's really interesting. We have our own dedicated page. So if you're out and about, download the app. It's free. You just create a username with like an email. Uh, and you're able to access all the data and input your own. So if you're out and you want to just upload some data to that, it really helps build uh, kind of the compendium of understanding we have about wildlife and urban spaces. Nick, I got a question um, for you. Interrupt yes. you with the duck pond. Um, yes. So I saw something someplace, and I just didn't even know what to make of it. But I figured you know because you're paying attention. There's well duck. Maybe. Yeah, no. Yeah, maybe you might, but uh, the ducklings, if there are any ducklings born yet, which I'm sure. They're yes, the coming ducklings up. just the ducklings just hatched. The ducklings just hatched yesterday, May 4th. Yesterday. Oh, boy. And so that like a uh, ramp that's built that actually helps them or hurts them. I don't know what oh, it, it, helps. <laughs> it helps. It helps. Yeah, there's you'd be surprised. You know what? Just yeah, so you didn't want them to go long, but. I have spent more time in the past couple of days and weeks on ducks than I ever thought I would, <laughs> but it's all part of kind of educating ourselves and trying to make sure we're coming to the to the best solution. So yes, the long and the short of it, mostly long, but I'll try to keep it short, is that when ducklings are born, um, they have to get out, they right? walk, born. and follow right. their. Father. But the way the way the way the the way the the way the 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 lily pool is designed is that the edges are too high for the ducklings to get out. Right? They're a little short. They can't. They can't. And the way ducks work, unbelievably, or believably, perhaps I didn't learn it until recently, is that ducks don't function like other birds. Where other birds, you know, you have the image in your mind where the bird captures the worm and then it comes back and feeds it yeah. to its. It, ducks don't work that way. Mother ducks call their ducklings to follow her, oh, wow. and she leaves them where they are to forage for food. That's how they learn how to survive. Um, so the issue here, of course, the you can see what I'm saying is that if they're in the pond, they can't get out. They can't follow the father. When the mother goes out to forage for food, the ducklings are stuck, leading them to either be stuck and starve or people feeding them, mm -hmm. which goes back to what? Don't feed, feed the animals them. because yeah. that only leads to animals expecting to be fed or them being fed things that are unhealthy. And even if it's like, oh, well, we understand it shouldn't be bread, but it should be, you know, duck food. I understand no, that, but right, wild exactly. ducks don't eat domesticated duck food that you buy in a store. Wild ducks eat, believe it or not, waterborne invertebrates for the most part, because yeah. that's their their wildlife. They're not pets, right? The other issue is, I don't think we can really kind of trap animals in Battery Park City. We need they need to be able to get in and out. But right. believe it or not, we wanted to make sure we were doing some additional research, so we had ramped it. Uh, on the advice and speaking with our partners at the Department of Environmental Conservation. Excellent. I thought um, you had done that. So yeah, 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 of course. But you know, just this morning, interestingly enough, because I, I wanted to make sure that we're having our, our premises right. It's always it's always, you know, important to make sure that you are really sure about the things that you're doing, especially from a, a public perspective, public policy perspective. Is there was con some concern that well, yes, that's fine, but the ducklings are going to get out, and if they get out, they'll jump into the Hudson. And then they'll, oh, they'll drown. Mm. Right. Um, but we have had these conversations um, with the uh, actually, I spent some time on this, this morning with, believe it or not, the uh, US Department of Fish and Wildlife, which recommends ramps. Okay. See ramps, incidentally, in places all across the country, the reflecting pool in Washington, D.C. has a ramp, Seattle, Washington, Virginia that's Beach, no, Fort Smith, New York. Perfect. Ramps are in a number of different places. Um, but very helpfully, what they had told us was, even after I went through the, the situation with them, I said, hey, guys, I want to make really sure here that, yes, there's a ramp, but I want to make sure, are we a unique enough situation, what with the river so close by, that we shouldn't ramp, even though that is the recommendation across the board. Yeah. And the wild, US Fish and Wildlife um, Service came back to us and confirmed for us again that no, wild ducks choose their nesting sites based on proximity to different kinds of habitats between which they will usually move and spend time to raise their ducklings. The movements of wild ducks, including what they call family broods, mm -hmm. should not be restricted as that wow. could add considerable stress and danger to the female 
and young. It's also illegal, apparently, as, as I noted, under federal law to harass or capture wild birds unless you have a permit, which we're not a, you know, we're not a zoo or a wildlife sanctuary. Yeah, right? we're a yeah exactly. You know, interestingly enough, also is um, ducklings can, which I didn't understand either, ducklings can swim when they're born or, you know, 12 hours after they're born, they can swim. They're not going to sink. They can fall long distances, sometimes out of trees as high as 50 or 60 feet high and land on ground or in the water. And they can swim perfectly fine in very strong surf tides and wow. waves. So ducks are very sturdy swimmers. Um, and they can, they can swim, uh, you know, significant distances within surviving, surviving, you know, so they are, you know, every, everybody we check with to make sure that this is indeed kind of the right decision to make. We are getting back that, yes, we understand that there's hazards perhaps that go into the river, but there are also hazards. Um, no, if they're I'm... stuck in the pond, including not being able to eat or getting attacked by other ducks. I had an email come in a few years ago, which is very frantic about Nick, help us. One of the mother ducks is drowning the baby of another mother duck because oh, dear it's God. scarce, right? Yeah. Or somebody threw a turtle into the pond and the turtle was drowning the ducks. So we love wildlife and we love nature, but these are wild animals and um, hazards will befall sometimes nature in wildlife, which all goes back to the point of keep it wild. Yeah, animals keep it come wild. Here for a reason, I love it. And they need to be able to kind of move freely about um, as nature right. intended. So sorry, but yes, no. as you can tell, I, I went deep on ducks. I went you deep went on deep ducks on ducks, ducks, but you know a lot about ducks and thank you for taking care of the ducks in Battery so Park City, right. about, as well as everything else. So thank you for that. All right, go ahead, You're go welcome. on. I'm all so right. sorry, sorry. I'm I love it. Say, ramps are good. Ramps are good, that's it. That's all I wanted to know, but okay. You gave me a lot more, Nick, and I'm so well, educated. For me too. Now. Yeah, this is great. Oh, ramps are good. Yes, for you too. Yes, there you go, <laughs> Betty. Uh, so we put some folks in there, uh, a couple of nice tweets we got. So i pointing out some of the beautiful plantings in South Cove and Sandra Power, who's one of our wonderful horticulturalists who takes such good care of some of the grounds in Battery Park City. Always nice to be recognized. Uh, next Battery Park City blood drive. Lucian, this is at uh, page, uh, page 8, May 18. So mark your calendars. I had it in the, in the report last uh, last month as well, I, I'm noticing now in my error, I didn't put the hyperlink to it, but when I post this online, I'll put the hyperlink to the actual site. You can reserve your slot. It's really a truly professional operation that the blood center runs there at Six River Terrace. That's on the 18th from noon to six. Uh, resiliency projects we covered. We were at the EPC committee um, late last month and we'll be back to them on the 17th talking about mobilization, interestingly enough, for the Battery Park City Ballfield Resiliency Project, which I know Betty to the transportation committee, oh, it seems like a lifetime ago now, it was very helpful at the start of this year, um, uh, shepherding through the revocable consent with DOT, which we worked through. So that looks like that's gonna be starting soon. And we wanna make sure that we get the community board caught up on what the mobilization around those bowl fields will look like uh, once construction starts. Okay, really quickly, scrolling down page 10, uh, we had some Earth Day highlights. We have the first briefing community uh, council and the community contacts. Temporary Art in Battery Park City, we know. Community composting, we can go through this fairly quickly unless there's any questions. And uh, I think that's it. We have a nice event coming up with the Museum of Jewish Heritage on the 27th, Historical Trauma and Cultural Hearing in, in 2021. That's at the bottom of page uh, 12 there. Again, this will all be on my, in my report. Um, and then the last thing I had was the Pixar putt, which we discussed at some length earlier. Um, so I think that's it. Oh, and uh, if Jeff is still on the line, I may have to prevail upon you for some advice on dogs at some point, but I will catch you up on what the particulars are. Okay. Um, we'll be in touch. Okay, thanks. But uh, in as much as you, you have the, the interface with the Bad Park City Dog Association. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so much, that man. was mostly it. Who, who else has any questions for me? I don't see any questions and I don't have any questions. Anybody have questions? Just unmute and talk if you have. Betty, no? Mm -mm. I hear no questions, Nick. I think we can call this meeting to a close. Thank you so much. And thank you for all that you, all you do for us all. I mean, I have to tell you, I know I was oh, sure. cranky, but yeah, no, thank you. So with, with you all were, this you, stuff, I, I do little, value. You were people. a little cranky, but it was, you know. I'm always long, cranky. It's been, it's been a long year. It's been, <laughs> it's been a long, long COVID.
We're in it together, though. Remember, remember when I tell you that we are. We're here every month for a reason because we I, care deeply about this community and the people in it. And um, you know, we're committed to making progress on the matters that are important to you. And at the end of the day, if the battery proxy goes away, who will take care of the ducks? That really, truly matters to me. Right. As I'm well as other things. Facetious. I'm not being facetious. It's important. All the little things you do, big and small, it matters. Keep it, keep it wild. Remember, folks, keep it wild. Don't interact. I have a Clement to Nick. When did that little baby of yours become a young lady? Yes. I was shocked is she when the, she is was she the greatest. She's, she's great. The greatest. Isn't she the greatest? Boy, am yes. I old. I mean, she's she's a young lady now. Yeah. She is. I sound like I sound like I sound like a typical old man, right? But you know, they get big so fast, they grow they up do. so fast. They do. I'm they gonna do. go to a book. That's it. I uh, love it. And she's so thank you, thank you, Vinny. It's very yes. sweet. But thank you all, Lucian. I think we can call this meeting to a close. So thank you so much. You can stop the recording and thank you 